for all of those that have continued to register and to uh, log in. We're just about to get started in the next couple of minutes. Uh, prior to that, I think you all see the poll. There's an anonymous poll that has been posted. If you could kindly help us fill in uh, the poll as we wait to, to get started. Thank you very much. Once again, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the event that was going to get started in the next uh, one minute or so. Uh, but as we're waiting for more people to uh, log on, we're seeing the, the participants are logging in um, quite rapidly. We're just going to give them another couple of minutes uh, to log in, get comfortable. But also as we're getting comfortable, if we could also fill in the anonymous poll that has been posted on your screens. This poll will be repeated again at the very end of the, of the event for those who will be joining in after we have started. But for those of you who already logged on, if you could kindly just take a, a couple of minutes to fill in the poll, uh, we would really appreciate it. Asante Nisan, and once again, we're getting started in exactly one minute. Asante. Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As we are about to kick off this event, um, if for those of you who have already logged on, if you could kindly um, help us to fill in the online poll that has been posted. Uh, and once again, um, this poll will be repeated at the very end of the event uh, for the other participants who are joining in as we proceed. But once again, I'll just give another minute for participants to continue logging on and we will be starting in one minute. Thank you. Okay, good morning, um, officially again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to our event this morning where we will be discussing um, how, we, how we move Tanzania, how we move our country 
uh, towards a, a green economy. Uh, this, this topic, once again, um, is not new. It has gained momentum over the past few years, uh, but now we're just bringing it in the context of Tanzania to see how really practically uh, how this can happen. When we talk about the green economy, um, it's very broad, it's very vast. There, there's an array of issues that, that can be addressed. And today's event will be quite broad in that it'll allow us to really look at the different facets at the different angles within which we can discuss and contribute towards um, pushing and moving Tanzania towards the green economy. So for example, we can discuss um, the green economy as it relates to agriculture or for um, as it relates to sustainable irrigation, for example. But we can also look at um, developments around solar energy, renewable energy. We can discuss um, how forests and our forests and our natural resources also contribute to this, but also climate action and um, ecosystems um, adaptations. And as well as um, if we look at, if we cross over to the marine space, we can also talk about sustainable, sustainable fisheries. These are just some of the very many um, issues that can be and are all a part of uh, the discussion that we can have today. Uh, and I welcome you all to really be um, active. And when I say active in this particular sense, it means we have an active chat that is already on now. So please share your thoughts, share your reactions uh, as we move uh, to, uh, throughout the event today. Um, don't, don't hesitate, um, even if it's something that you have just thought about, it may not be particular to that presentation, but it's a question that you may have please post um, and keep things uh, moving in the chat. We're, we're monitoring that and we will be addressing those uh, comments, questions as we move along. So the, the today's session in joining the pilot for research uh, and dialogue um, sessions of the past couple of months, uh, we've had um, a, a standard uh, session where we have uh, a keynote presentation and we move straight to our panel. However, uh, today, this is the last uh, of the installment um, for Pilot for Research, and I'll hand over to, to, to uh, Pilot for Research and Dialogue themselves, and they'll explain more as to, you know, that they're coming to the end of the project. So for this particular event today, it'll be a bit longer. We, 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 we hope to be together for the next uh, three hours to take us up till about 12 o'clock. And the first maybe half an hour or so will be hearing from Pilot for Research um, and Dialogue in terms of what they have done, overview of the project and some of the, uh, of the, of the way forward. And then after that is when we'll move to our more conventional um, event, as most of you know, the way in which we have tackled our events so far. So with that, I would now like to turn over to uh, a presentation of the Pilot for Research and Dialogue projects. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Elise Ferron to take us through uh, what exactly Pilot for Research and, Development and Dialogue has done over the past couple of years. Welcome, Dr. Elise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Namwaka, and a very warm welcome to all of you um, to this last session uh, um, or the last consultation event organized uh, by the Project Pilot for Research and Dialogue. So I, I won't take too much of your time, but uh, we thought it would be a good idea to um, use this last uh, consultation event to briefly inform everybody about uh, the work that we will have conducted within the frame of the project. Um, so um, as uh, most of you, I suppose, know by now, uh, the, there are uh, four partners in the, in the project pilot for research and dialogue. So Tampere University and mo most, uh, more particularly the Tampere Peace Research Institute, which I represent. Uh, then uh, Pilot for Dev, uh, uh, located in Brussels, then IMED, Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship Development um, in Dar, and uh, COWI um, in uh, Denmark. And the project is co-funded uh, by the European Union for the benefit of the Tanzanian government. 
so um, in addition to the project partners, we all also have uh, um, research teams associated uh, to the project, uh, two of them in particular, one led by uh, Professor uh, Kayula Bishagazi and the other one led by Professor Mas Marcelina Shish Shishorizga. Um, and uh, they have uh, been conducting research on behalf of the project and produced uh, numerous studies and policy briefs, which I will present you uh, very briefly. Uh, we, um, in the project, we also have a pool of experts uh, um, made up of uh, 30 national and international experts. Um, and um, we, uh, unfortunately, during the course of the, the project, uh, we um, faced a terribly sad event of losing one of them, uh, Dr. Ali uh, Ibrahim Miela. And I want to pass on the floor immediately to Hans Determeyer to say a few words about Ali, uh, whom we, we all really miss. Hans, if you could just say a few words. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Elise. Uh, Ali Medjala, I think uh, you could consider as uh, Mze PPD. Uh, the establishment of the culture of uh, public-private dialogue in Tanzania has benefited enormously from the uh, work, the good work of uh, Mze Ali Mujela. He grew up the early years in British times and then went to secondary school just around independence. He had a chance to study economics and joined government, I think uh, mostly the hospitality uh, uh, sector. And he saw in his early years how public uh, and private relations suffered from the difficulty to go from a central plan economy to a well-regulated market economy. In 2003, 2004, he joined first the conceptual process and later the uh, best program, business, uh, uh, stimulating uh, in Tanzania and the dialogue around it. He ran that for, he joined that team and uh, was on the team for 15 years. I joined at a later stage. And the article that uh, features in the book that is presented today is actually um, describing his views on this process, this struggle to get an easier business environment for Tanzania. We wrote it together and towards the end just when we had uh, submitted it to um, the peer review team, Ali fell ill and a few weeks later succumbed to COVID. That was very sad. I think we missed somebody uh, who has been a driver behind public-private dialogue, who believed, was courageous, humble man, very knowledgeable, but kept believing that Tanzania can actually have a vibrant market economy. I think I can speak on behalf of the team with whom he worked, that it was a really a pleasure to work with him. His wisdom, his patience, but also his insistence on believing in dialogue inspired all of us and we miss all of him. Yeah, thank you, Hans. Thank you for, for, your, for your kind words. We certainly uh, miss Ali, not just uh, his expertise on, on the topic covered by the project, but also for his kindness. So thank you very much. Okay, um, so um, I, I, I will, uh, oops, yeah, um, briefly just to remind everyone about the global objectives of the pilot for research and dialogue. So we had uh, we have two main uh, objectives. The first one is to promote dialogue on economic resources, policy and fiscal governance in Tanzania. And the second is to create a platform for sustainable dialogue, including public and private stakeholders in different regions. You will hear more about this in a few minutes. 
uh, we have other sub objectives, let's say three uh, sub objectives. The first one is to promote and disseminate high quality and evidence based research and policies, resources, economic and fiscal governance. The second is to nurture debate among stakeholders from the public, private and civil society sectors on economic and fiscal governance issues, especially with government uh, stakeholders. And the last sub objectives is to increase research capacity and expand the links, networks and connections among economic and governance research institutions in Tanzania. So um, the, the project is organized around three main pillars. Uh, the first one is research and studies, which I will, uh, I will present some of them and then my colleague will present some others. Uh, the second pillar is a support to inter institutional and policy dialogue. And the third one is communication, dissemination, and outreach. And of course, today's ev event belongs to that uh, third pillar. In, in terms of outputs, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, as you can see on this slide, we, uh, we have produced quite a lot. Uh, so including studies, policy briefs, a scientific book, a handbook, and so on and so forth. I, I will very briefly give you an overview of this, don't be scared. So the first uh, study we, uh, we produced um, uh, um, the, the, the team led by Kayula Bishagazi produced on uh, macroeconomic policies and fiscal reforms in, in Tanzania, positive uh, developments. It's available on the project website. All, all of uh, those things are freely available on the project website. Uh, the second study led by Marcelina Shijoriga um, on trans Tanzania's fiscal governance, budget needs and public expenditure with an analysis on equalities and trust, uh, also available on the project website. And uh, the third main study on macroeconomic policies, foreign direct investments and new emerging sectors, um, also by Kayu, uh, Dr. Kayula Bishagazi uh, and her team and available on the project website. Based on these three studies, we have um, published nine policy briefs uh, in total. So um, each uh, three of, uh, of each um, um, corresponding to the three uh, studies. So three policy briefs per study. So as you can see, these are the first, uh, well, the policy briefs corresponding to the first study. So on um, the mining sector, on the sustainable development goals in Tanzania and on youth uh, in agribusiness. Uh, the uh, second set of policy briefs uh, is the corresponds to the second study. And as you can see, covers issues such as youth engagement in the budgeting process, women inclusion in the budgeting process and um, Tanzania's agricultural bu uh, budget. And uh, the, the uh, final set of policy briefs corresponding to the third study uh, deal with um, the competitiveness of horticulture in Tanzania, tax policies and foreign direct investment in Tanzania, and uh, the topic of today's uh, uh, panel, uh, um, the green economy in, uh, in Tanzania. I want to say uh, as well that we are currently uh, uh, working on a translation of all these um, policy briefs into Swahili. They will um, be available on the project website in the course of December uh, in Swahili. Uh, and it will be free to download, of course, uh, um, on, the, on the project website. Uh, we are, have also organized consultation events like the one we're having today, uh, corresponding to uh, um, the topics covered in the, in the studies and in the policy briefs. So these are the consultation events organized for the first study. Then uh, the two consultation events corresponding to the second study on women and youth uh, and the budgeting process. And finally, the consultation events corresponding to the third study, so the, the public-private dialogue uh, consultation event that we had uh, earlier this month, and today's panel on uh, the, the transition to a green economy in Tanzania. Uh, we have also uh, organized uh, uh, panels of experts uh, dealing with the studies in order to uh, discuss uh, with um, specific experts the content uh, of the studies. Um, in addition, and you will hear more about the, the scientific book in a few minutes, uh, we have 
um, you know, published a handbook and a scientific book. Uh, well, the, the handbook is not available yet. It will soon be available on the project website, freely available as well. And a scientific book, which uh, my colleague uh, Pascaline Gabori will uh, present in a few minutes. I will just end by saying that um, uh, there are many recommendations uh, listed in the policy briefs um, available on the, on the project's website, uh, but I just want to underscore two of them uh, because these are really like cross-cutting. <clears throat> the first one is that youth participation in economic development appears as the most important uh, cross-cutting issue uh, you know, in the results that we gathered, uh, and it's applied to all identified sectors, such as horticulture or the green economy. And the second uh, main policy recommendation uh, I want to underscore is the specific participation and engagement of women uh, in uh, the economic development of Tanzania. And uh, the project has really shown that it's, it's an essential uh, uh, dimension uh, of uh, economic uh, development in Tanzania. Okay, I, I will immediately pass on the floor uh, to my colleague Pascaline Gabori, who will um, present uh, the, the scientific book, uh, which I very briefly mentioned. Thank you all, and once again, a warm welcome uh, to this last event of the Pilot for Research and Dialogue project. Thank you very much, Elise. Thank you very much, Namwaka. Uh, so my name is Pascaline Gabori. I'm the director of Pilot for Day, which is a small think tank in Europe based in Brussels. We've been a partner into this project and we had the chance to uh, work on the scientific book and on the publication, uh, which has been um, published today. Um, so thank you very much for uh, having me here. And um, first of all, I would like to say how happy I was to participate into this project. And uh, this publication is maybe the, the end of something, but we hope it's going to be the beginning of a new cooperation for instance, with the authors and experts we've been working with. Um, so the idea was that the partners of the, the project have written a scientific book in, called uh, Learning from Resilience Strategies in Tanzania. The book is divided into 12 chapters. We've involved 16 different researchers, and it relies both on theories and case studies. Um, the, the books will be available in print copies and there will be a free online version which is already available since this morning. So you can download the book for free uh, to the link which is, which is on the screen, but which is also in the discussion, uh, which will also be available in, into the discussion. So this is the book cover. It's uh, divided into three main parts. Um, the first part was about socioeconomic realities and impacts. The second part was on uh, resilience to global challenges and to climate change. So really with our topic today on the green economy. And the third part was on the role of women between vulnerability and resilience. So uh, this is the copy uh, of the book. Um, now I'm really um, happy to see whether some of the authors are here today. First of all, I would like to thank all the people who have made it possible the project partners, the book publishers, all the authors, all the experts, but also all the network of researchers we, which we have been in contact with to gather the information. So uh, first of all, I see that uh, William Amos Palangio is here. Maybe he can also um, give a short overview in two sentences about uh, the first chapter of the book. Um, are you connected? No. I don't think um, it's connected. If you're connected, please do not hesitate to take the floor. Um, Kayula, Kayula uh, also uh, Professor Kayula Mishikasi wrote a chapter on the social economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on women and girls in, uh, in Tanzania. Um, Kayula, if you would like to Hello. just say a few words. Thank you, Pascaline. Morning, everyone. Uh, we, uh, I wrote a chapter on how the, the chapter basically aimed to assess or to examine how the COVID-19 pandemic affected women and girls, especially socially and economically in Tanzania. And uh, we basically used field data from Tabora region where the problem was more prominent. And the chapter basically addresses appropriate policy issues to be considered 
uh, where it should happen in case uh, in future we have several pandemics or similar pandemics, how, what are the main policy issues that must be taken into consideration? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Gayula. This is a very interesting chapter. I see William is now connected. William, if you'd like to take the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pascaline, and good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is William Amos Palanjo. Uh, I wrote a chapter on informal uh, workers in Tanzania, where I tried to look at the coping strategies and re re resilience uh, factors. And the book was motivated by the impact of COVID-19. And I was trying to see how the government can intervene in terms of uh, our policies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so there are two authors, but there have been many authors. Um, uh, in this book, so 16 in total, if you can go to the uh, next part. Um, there was one book, as mentioned by Mr. Determeyer, written by Ali Yela and Hans Determeyer, one a chapter on uh, forest management uh, written by Professor Magret Bouchesha together with myself, uh, some on uh, multinational enterprises and local supply chains by Felix uh, Nandonde, and one uh, chapter on water governance and civic participation uh, written by Saida Fendi. Uh, before I also um, pass on the floor to our co-editor, Mr. Donato Lomi, uh, I would like to know whether there are authors who are now present who would like to just quickly introduce their chapters. No, not on the second part. And then there was a third part on the women's participation in the different uh, economic sector. Um, two chapters written by Professor Elise Piron, uh, which are also very interesting in connection with the theory. And um, one uh, case study uh, on Dar es Salaam City and women in the informal sector, coordinated by Constantin. So if there are no other uh, authors, I would like to thank again all the authors. Um, and I would like to let you know that you can download the book for free. It's going to be open, uh, in open access. So anybody can just download it from the publisher website, it's our own. Uh, we hope that uh, you will find it interesting and that it's going to be the beginning of a new cooperation with the network of uh, authors and, and researchers. Next slide. Uh, yes, thank you very much. So now I'm happy to give the floor to you, I, um, the co-editor. Uh, oh, I see that I'm, um, uh, yes, I, I'm really happy to give the floor to Donato Lomi, who's also the co-editor of the book, who's going to present also the, the next milestones and the sustainability uh, strategy of the project with the uh, uh, also dialogue on uh, um, public-private um, uh, dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Pascalina. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor, you're, you're very loud and clear. Oh, Go ahead, thank please. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm happy to be here this morning. I will present uh, the sustainability strategy for the project. Uh, and uh, I will start by saying that uh, the project has developed uh, the portal, which can be used to continue the dialogue between the private sector and, and, the, and the government, and it could provide an ongoing link uh, between the two sides. Uh, and of course, our priority would have been to have uh, a strong focus on youth economic empowerment. But this is this will also depend on the agenda of the organization or partner who will continue uh, to, con to 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 manage the process. And uh, through the portal, dialogue can take place through planned events like this, but also through through journals or through a combination. Uh, by journals, I mean through text video, audio uh, between the two sides. And it can be very much linked to various resources. So there is no shortage of how creative 
uh, it can be in terms of engaging partners. Now the project has paid already for the portal for the next three years. So that is already a contribution to sustainability, but uh, the host will have to do other things and may actually be able to develop a sustainable model for maintaining the, the, the portal and the dialogue. Now, in terms of hosting, the, the, the first thing, the sustainability, the first thing is to host the portal, which includes paying the annual cost, which is paid for already for the next two years. But more importantly, someone needs to manage the information flows, make sure that the information uh, submitted is, is correct and uh, quality to making ongoing improvements and upgrades to the process, to manage dialogue, to continue to working with partners to set the agenda, to invite stakeholders, to, to invite stakeholders, I'm told I need to increase my, my volume. So let me just do that. So to manage dialogue, set the agenda, work with stakeholders and uh, other activities, now, who could actually take over this process? We have discussed with some stakeholders, but until now, none, none, none of them is fully committed to the process. We believe in the in due course, uh, there will be uh, a stakeholder who will be interested to actually take up this uh, agenda. So TNBC could be one of them, but any of the major private sector organizations, because they all worked with government to, to, to engage private sector with, with public sector in dialogue. But also we have youth focused networks like Sugeko, which might actually be interested in taking over this to, to focus especially on the issues related to youth engagement and youth economic empowerment. But also some civil society uh, have agendas that, that involves business, for example, and sustainability, but also think tanks like uh, ESRF, Rapoa and, and others. And there might even be government entities that would want to use this, this platform to engage the private sector, to get feedback, to communicate, to, to improve the relationship between the two sides. So actually there are different ways this photo can be used. And uh, in terms of what we have experienced and what we can leave as lessons uh, is that uh, to, to sustain this kind of dialogue, it will be very helpful to make sure that the research is more demand driven and to make sure that you build incentives for all parties. For example, uh, getting the public sector, the private sector to identify areas that are priority in terms of research, in-depth in analysis and generation of, of, of evidence that can be used for policy making, for influencing policy makers, et cetera. But also to provide an avenue for participating researchers to be able to publish the output. For example, having the book in this project has really motivated some of the young researchers to contribute to the research. And that can be through a book like this, but also like uh, through special journals. And that actually brings the importance of involving a research institution, uh, including university, where there are a lot of research talent and, and where there are incentives for people to carry on research but also to encourage the use of action research so that studies directly uh, contribute to what practitioners need, but also enable researchers to, to produce the, the output that they could, they could publish. So these are the, the ideas we have for, for sustainability of the photo. This is still work in progress. And uh, we actually invite any interested party in the next two weeks to express interest in sustaining the, the, the portal. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to continuing engaging with stakeholders to be able to sustain this process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Olomi and the whole Pilot for Research and Dialogue team uh, for taking us through your journey of the past two years, uh, but also um, how you're hoping to keep the momentum going and the sustainability. Uh, there's a lot of information. Um, as you said, there's a book uh, that was presented and several chapters. Some of the authors who are here, thank you very much. Uh, but also the policy briefs, I, I believe the nine policy briefs um, as presented as well. 
All of this information um, is available on the Pilot for Research and Dialogue website. And um, I believe and I see here, some of the links have already been shared and they will continue to be shared. So thank you very much uh, for sharing with us your, your, your two-year journey, but as well as also for sharing the special tributes to Dr. Ali Mjela, um, who passed on during the course of the, the project. Uh, thank you very much for that acknowledgement. And we are all uh, very grateful for his, um, for his uh, love of dialogue and um, his belief in, uh, in PP, uh, PPDs. So thank you for that. Um, before I turn to the opening remarks, I will just really like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Ms. Hodan Adu with us here today. Uh, Ms. Hodan Adu is a UN Women Country Re Representative. So we're really pleased and honored that, um, uh, that you've taken the time to join us. So Asante Sana and thank you. I would now like to turn uh, the floor to Ms. Lisa Satoli to give us some opening remarks from the, Lisa Satoli is from the European Union. Welcome, Ms. Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everybody can hear and see me um, okay. So uh, first I would actually like to congratulate the team for pulling, um, pulling off some amazing work at very, very challenging uh, times. Um, I know that this project started um, right at the start of the global, uh, let's say, disruptions in, in the way that we can work and, and speak together. Um, and the team still managed to pull off uh, three research reports, and nine policy briefs, seven consultation events, three panels of experts, a publication, and a manual. So I think they quite outdid themselves. And um, we as you are very, very um, thankful for, for the work that they've been done, uh, that they've done um, and that they put into um, putting this together. Um, for, for the EU, promoting a vibrant and open space for dialogue um, is actually quite an important pillar of, of EU collaboration and, and cooperation. Um, and the EU um, does so by um, having close collections and, and partnerships with academ uh, academia, with private sector, and, and also as much as we can um, with beneficiaries and, and stakeholders at local levels. Um, but we don't have the capacity to um, have consultations to the same scope that um, Pilot for Development has done uh, for us. And so the work that they've done will be of uh, great importance and significance into our um, existing and, and future cooperation. And, and um, we really hope that uh, it will help us to um, stimulate more evidence-based and, and inclusive uh, programs and, and policy dialogues in Tanzania. Um, I will keep my opening remarks very short because I know there's a very um, full program ahead and, and very interesting conversations still to be held. Um, but I did uh, appreciate the, moment, the opportunity to, to just mention that, to, to mention our gratitude and, um, and, uh, and appreciation for the work that's been done. And I join uh, colleagues in, in looking for ways to make sure that the work that has been done will be sustainable and it will be picked up. Um, and that it will not uh, end up in a shelf somewhere and that the ownership of the, of the work um, will, will get to the right stakeholders so that we can actually um, build on it and, um, and, and hopefully turn uh, the research and the, and the findings into actually um, policies and, and programs. So uh, again, congratulations and I'm looking forward to, to the discussions today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lisa, for sharing those uh, brief remarks with us, but also really helping us put Pilot for Research and Dialogue in context of where they sit, um, especially within uh, the EU cooperation and, and the work that they're doing and how it aligns with what, with what you're trying to do in terms of uh, working closely with academia, working closely with the private sector, but also trying um, your best to work with the beneficiaries at the local level um, but you acknowledge that, of course, uh, there's, there's a limit, limitation in terms of the capacity as the EU and the reach. And so partnering and working with organizations or projects such as Pilot for Research and Dialogue really then becomes even more important. Um, the research and dialogue, that this, this pilot and this project has for the past two years been able to, I believe, uh, reach um, 
reach more people in terms of bringing stakeholders uh, together uh, to discuss um, all the issues that were presented by the project team. Um, we've had uh, several lively uh, and inform informative discussions over the past uh, uh, few months um, on all range of issues around sustainable development, um, but also most importantly, and I think this was also stressed by the, by the project team, uh, is the role of women um, and the role of youth. So I think this um, once again highlights and brings to the forefront the importance of such projects and the, and the significance of the work that this project um, has done for the past two years, but also uh, with what Dr. Lomi um, pointed out in terms of their thinking, already thinking through the sustainability. Um, and as uh, Ms. Lisa rightly said, we wouldn't want the research and all the, the rich um, research and the information to simply sit um, on somebody's shelf. So it's, uh, it's good that even as a project, they're already thinking through how to ensure sustainability, how to ensure that they, the information that they have um, received to date will continue to be useful, but also they have a, a, a clear sustainability plan in terms of having the portal, um, I believe for the next two to three years, um, managing the information as Dr. Lomi pointed out, also having improvements um, in terms of the systems that they're using, um, but also in terms of managing the, uh, the uh, continuous uh, communication and dialogue. So with this, I really hope that um, this is not the end in terms of the, the, the project. Uh, we're hoping to see more um, cooperation and collaboration with support from, from um, the, the, the European Union um, so that we can continue to see the fruitful uh, dialogues and conversations that we're having and just to push the sustainable development agenda forward. Um, and I think this is really at the heart of, of why we're, we're all here and why we're all uh, doing this. Uh, so with that uh, marks the end of the first part. I think uh, in my introduction, I said that this event is almost split into two. The first part um, was really looking at the overall project, uh, what the project has been able to, to do, uh, which you, you have all heard for the past about uh, 30, 35 minutes or so, all the publications that, um, that have been uh, produced. The policy briefs are also that have been um, that are available. Uh, the links have been shared. I, I've noticed. Uh, I'm noticing that some comments that some links may not be um, fully working yet. But I believe that this will be fixed. Um, Pilot for Research and Dialogue will work to ensure that all the links and uh, to the publications, the policy briefs, and the books, and all the chapters that were mentioned here today, um, they will be ac accessible. So please just uh, um, be patient, um, and I'm sure the project team will. We'll sort all of that out and within the next um, uh, few hours or by the end of today, all the links that I shared today will be up and running and you'll have access to uh, the information that has been shared by the project team. So thank you very much the project team for taking us through all of the, the good work that you've done, but also thank you very much Miss uh, Lisa Satoli for taking time out of I know your very busy schedule um, to share those words with us in terms of how um, important this project has been um, to the, U the EU and it's also and how important it is for not just existing but also for future cooperation and here you also pointed to the fact that you really are looking and calling for more evidence-based um, uh, uh, research to provide input into um, decision making so once again thank you and now we're transitioning to the second part of our event, which takes on the format of the of our previous events that we've had in the past, and I see some for most of you here on um, on the participants list, you have you're not you're not newcomers to our events. Uh, you're 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 return customers, which is good, uh, excellent to see. My name is Namwa Komari. Uh, I am the moderator for these sessions for P P Pilot for Research and Dialogue, and I will be taking you now through to the second part. Uh, where we'll have a keynote presentation. Um, and after the keynote presentation, I will be turning the floor over to our experts um, in terms of our panelists to give uh, their reactions and their reflections from the keynote, but also to present um, some of the work that uh, they're doing. So here's when, once again, as I mentioned at the beginning, we really encourage you to post um, questions, to post comments, uh, to post your own reflections, 
um, on 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 the on the chat, and we really do keep um, keep reading them, and and we post the questions to the panelists. We may not be able to give everybody a chance to to speak, but we do uh, read all your posts and your and your comments, and we address them. Or we po we point them to whether it's a, if it's to a specific um, panelist, um, then we we also do that. So with that, I will be calling on the keynote presentation. But prior to that, I'll also just like to note, um, I think I, I see Soche Senari is on um, as one of our participants. Soche, we received your questions and I will be coming to you when we call the panelists. I'll be giving you um, an opportunity to also speak. And thank you for your very good comment that we have already received. I think you, I believe you sent it yesterday. So Soche, so, so said, please, um, if you can just prepare maybe a quick two, three minutes um, of your thoughts, uh, they're very important. And I'll be calling you up when, when we get to the, to, the, to, the, to the panelists. So I would now like to turn uh, and welcome our keynote uh, presenter for today. As, as mentioned at the very beginning of the introduction, we're talking about how we can move Tanzania, how we can move our country towards um, a green economy. And ultimately here we're talking about long-term long sustainability, which is really in all of our minds uh, as, we, as we push this agenda forward for Tanzania. So um, our keynote uh, speaker today, Mr. Tad J.L. Uro, is an impressive individual with depth of knowledge in this topic. He is a climate uh, resilience champion, as well as a technical advisor. And he has been active in climate action and energy issues since 2014, including in international climate change negotiations. He's also a Mandela Washington Fellow, a prestigious US government initiative for young African leaders. And I think most of us here know of that um, initiative. Some of his global green footprints are the UN Environment Adaptation Gap Report of 2017, the UN Environment uh, GEO Report for Youth of 2019, and the Taj tree, a tree named after him in North Carolina, uh, USA. So with that, I'd like to welcome Mr. Rio Karibusana. Asante sana. Thank you all for the opportunity uh, to be with you today and share about the green economy uh, and the position of Tanzania towards achieving green economy. So the green economy is a result of uh, of the well-balanced environmental, social, and uh, economic well-being. Uh, so it's basically the well-being of human being, uh, the well-being of human uh, when the, we balance the economic growth, uh, the social accountability and sustainability, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, um, uh, sustainability and the resources. So, uh, when we talk about the uh, green economy, we are basically talking about the uh, growth toward the low carbon pathway, uh, which is in line with the global movement for now, uh, as well as the, as the means of responding to uh, climate change and global warming. And uh, it's toward this low carbon pathway economic growth, uh, it's really important to make sure that the three base elements of green economy are uh, well balanced. Uh, again, the social sustainability, uh, making sure that the social uh, component of the uh, function of society is well uh, balanced and it grows in a way that it is sustainable, but also the, the economic sustainability, making sure that we are building our economic model, we are building our household and national uh, economy in a sustainable way, uh, balancing the, the impact of the economic growth into the environment as well as uh, into the social uh, functions. Uh, and again, it's the issue of environmental sustainability. How do we uh, consider environment as a key element on our growth uh, uh, toward the, the achieving the, the green economy in Tanzania? And there are principles of uh, green economy for, for, for the economy to be, to be referred as a green one. Uh, there are some principles, and I'm going to talk about them. Uh, one is well-being principle that uh, it creates an opportunity for people uh, to be able to create and enjoy the prosperity. So when there is an opportunity within the community, people they can have uh, they can create wealth 
they can enjoy, it's not just creating, they can enjoy the work that they made. That's one of the principles in, in a green economy. But also it's very important to, to, to avail the principle of justice. So uh, within the green economy, we, have, we promote equity between generation and within generation. That's a very important element uh, towards achieving uh, or toward maintaining the green economy in the new country. And uh, as long as we are, the climate has no boundary, we have one planet, we have this principle of uh, planetary uh, boundaries principle, which uh, look at the resilient investment, investing for the future, making sure that um, as long as we share one planet and uh, there is no way we can, we can move to another planet, we have to take care of the planet, which supports our business and our livelihood. But also uh, the other principle is uh, efficiency and sufficiency. Here we are talking about uh, um, sustainable production, sustainable consumption. So within the, the, the green economy, there are some elements uh, which are very important from individuals uh, and corporation and everyone uh, based on how do we consume products and services. So it's very important for, for, the, for the people who are within the green economy, the, as of now we are talking of Tanzania, uh, to have a conscious consumers who really care about uh, what are they buying, what do they consume, are they, uh, the process of making the products and services, is it sustainable? Is it uh, growing towards net zero or low carbon pathways? So having such kind of uh, mindset to the consumers, uh, as well as uh, to the producers uh, through the sustainable production, is uh, one of the uh, core principles of green economy. But again, everything needs governance. Uh, it's very important uh, for the economy. Uh, and one of the principles is the good governance principle. And this uh, entails the whole is about the institutional framework, the accountability, but all, but, uh, but again, the, the issue of decision making within the system of the established uh, legal framework. So uh, for the economy, uh, for the green economy to be sustainable, uh, it needs to look at all these principles and make sure that we take all of them and they, they are all important, but we all know that the governance is the, is the driving force for uh, success uh, among others. And sometimes we have these discussions that um, working with development partner, it, it brings uh, positive changes in our, in our development and everything. They can offer us anything, but they can't bring governance to us. The governance is that I have to be a homegrown, uh, so we have to develop our own governance and make sure that we have our ethics uh, towards um, uh, strengthening our institutional, strengthening our decision making, and making sure that we are using the best of um, technical uh, advice and uh, knowledge towards achieving the, 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 the green economy, among others. So the Strong institutional uh, framework with the governance is the key element uh, when it comes to, 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 to the green economy. But also I would like to know how, how come now we are talking about the, the green economy, where this came from. So uh, the concept of the green economy uh, actually gained the momentum during the early 90s. Uh, I remember in 1922, uh, during the Rio S Summit, United Nations, uh, conference on Environment and Development, where we came up with uh, three conventions, uh, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, we have a CBD Convention on Biodiversity and UNCCD on issues related to uh, combating desertification. So after Rio, the global community started now to look at the development in a way that um, we have to balance the, our growth and the environment as well as the social uh, sustainability. Uh, because if you look at the data related to uh, global warming, related to the changing climate, we need to do this. We need to achieve green economy as a solution to, to the climate change. So uh, the, the topic, the, the, the concept grew up in Rio and uh, it has been taken in different countries. And from 1992, 
to 1997, where we had the uh, Kyoto Protocol, which also enlightened, uh, emphasized the, the, uh, the issues related to cutting greenhouse gas emissions for developing countries. But at the same time, in Tanzania in 1977, in 1997, where there were first environmental policies, which uh, took the environmental element uh, toward the growth of Tanzania. So uh, the issue uh, at the global level, we, we achieved to have a, a Kyoto Protocol. At the national level, we, we made it to have um, uh, environmental uh, policy. From 1997, coming to um, to 2000, where we had uh, first we had two major issues with Tanzania Development Vision 2025, but also we had uh, Millennium Goal. And four years later, we came up with the Environmental Management Act, which strengthened the police, environmental policy now in form of uh, enforcement and having a legal uh, instrument, uh, in including institutions like NEMS, to make sure that uh, all these are in place. and can be enforced to, 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 to the practice, uh, to the people, corporation, and the government as well. Now, uh, first to track it to 2015, actually to years 2015, where we had the uh, uh, Paris Agreement, which is a global accord for, for response towards climate change, and it brings all parties together to make sure that we are growing toward low carbon pathway. And actually, one of the goal of Paris Agreement is uh, to make sure that we promote financial flow and investment toward low carbon pathways, but we consider the, the economic growth as well as uh, um, the social sustainability. Uh, and in Tanzania, we have developed a number of frameworks to make sure that we are we are now in within uh, we are moving with the world on a on a Paris Agreement, and we have. Uh, Second uh, NDC, National Determined Contribution, submitted the, uh, July this year to United Nations Framework on Convention on Climate Change. Uh, and it said that um, we're going to reduce our greenhouse gas emission uh, between 30 to 35% by 2030, based on a uh, business as usual scenario. And this is quite a big ambition. Uh, now I'm, I'm looking forward to if we can achieve that. But it's good to know that the, the, the commitment is conditional. Uh, there is a conditionality part of it, uh, subjective to availability of funding, uh, technology, and technical support from developed country uh, as per uh, climate finance responsibility. Uh, so it, it will depend how we, we can really get the resources to, to, to make it happen as per our NDC. But looking at the, the whole framework of green economy in Tanzania, uh, there are some really, despite all the effort that we have been doing uh, and some of the projects that have been done in Tanzania, uh, which promote the, the, the green economy. Uh, let's say uh, Sagoti initiative, uh, we have now in the transport, the, the uh, BRT, we have SGR, we have uh, uh, another investment in different sector that uh, promote the essence and of the green economy. But still, we have gaps, um, particularly on the on a policy point of view and the and the framework of achieving uh, green economy in Tanzania. So far, we don't have uh, a dedicated policy and strategy and roadmap to 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 guide the national development towards uh, the green economy. So. It's more of uh, um, it appear in different policies and plans, but we lack the, 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 the roadmap, the national roadmap toward the, the green economy achievement or transition. And it's important to note that uh, failing to, to go with the global community uh, in transition to green economy, we are preparing ourselves to fail in the future. Uh, look at the example of, uh, uh, let's say, um, the revolution of uh, vehicles, automobile, uh, cars, how they disturb the market uh, for the people who were doing, uh, let's like, say, houses, a uh, business, they used to, to, to such kind of thing. Or look at the machines, uh, the way the transition has been so rapid and technology as well. So 
those who failed to get prepared uh, to this um, uh, revolution, technological revolution, um, they actually lag behind and it takes time to, to catch up. So uh, for the context of Tanzania, we really need to speed up and uh, make sure that we have the legal framework, we have the institutional uh, framework that guide our economic growth uh, towards the green economy. Um, and it has to be owned uh, by the people. And it's very important also to be owned by the trade unions. Uh, why I'm saying this about the trade unions? Uh, the, everything that brings changes in the community and the economy, be it positive or negative, it brings a number of uncertainties. And we, we differ how we look at the things, depends on where you are. So uh, trade unions, um, they have to be prepared, they have to be engaged in this transition because part of the, the transition will involve changing their work, changing the way they do, uh, the, uh, they do production, changing the way uh, the economic flow works toward them, the, the income flow toward, toward, toward them. So uh, they really need to be part of the process because we don't need resistance in the future um, uh, blocking the growth, the green economic growth in the country. So it can all be achieved by making sure that we have unions on board. We have youth, youth is a big energy in this country. Uh, they bring a lot of innovation. They can bring a lot of uh, ideas and everything. Uh, so women and youth, they have a very key element to, 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 to make sure that we, we can achieve the green economy in Tanzania. But uh, it's also very important to look at the, the political leadership and the willingness toward the, the low, low carbon pathway investment and, and the economic growth. Why I'm saying this? Uh, so with political will, uh, we have seen that, but also we really need it to be translated into policies and, 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 uh, and the strategy, as well as the budget. It is very important, as well as budget, underline that. So uh, having political commitment and leadership uh, toward green economy transition, transition to green economy in the country with a good framework will make it more easier to, uh, for the general public to move towards the green economy. Will, will make it easier uh, or will contribute to the smooth transition of the uh, sustainable consumption. We need uh, consumers who are consuming products and services sustainably and who can influence the production modality to make sure that the uh, the service provider uh, the manufacturer bring their products and services uh, in a way that is sustainably and it's inclusive it also it also promotes economic growth it's very important to balance the three things uh, because there are some of uh, debates on how can we develop the economic growth with a uh, minimum environmental impact. There is evidence of that, that it can be done. And the myth of saying we can pollute now and clean later is really a burden and it's a proven burden that, uh, well, it's not sus uh, sustainable. But also, it takes much more to clean later uh, uh, using the, 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 the economy that you build with the debt, uh, production, and everything. So it's something that we is not sustainable. So uh, for Tanzania, there is a lot of opportunity to embrace the green economy, uh, particularly looking at the energy sector. We have a lot of opportunity to, to, to promote um, public-private investment or Public, uh, I mean, private investment in the energy sector. Looking at the current status of the energy. Hello.
So, well, so uh, we've done a lot about the rural electrification, but one thing is missing, uh, productive use of energy in these rural settings. Uh, we bring energy to them, we connect them to the uh, power, but we don't really invest to, to make sure that they know about the productive use of energy. So they end up using energy uh, merely for lighting and power in their devices, you know, uh, which is not really a, a, a economically, uh, you know, sounds well, you know. So uh, I would appreciate if we can also promote the sustainable and productive use of energy, making sure that when energy comes to you, to you, your setting, be it a rural or very urban or urban area as well, uh, we use it in a, in a way that it generates more income in an environmental friendly way, but also in a socially uh, sustainable, in, in a way that uh, it can also promote inclusive economic growth in your, in, in your setting. But also looking at the issue of uh, waste management, we know that uh, waste is one of the biggest source of uh, methane, which is uh, one of the dangerous uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but also it's an opportunity to, to, to generate energy. So through waste management, we can do a lot, um, be it a power generation, but also as creating um, a fertilizer, organic fertilizer and other kinds of things. So there is a lot of opportunities in this um, subsector uh, for Tanzania to embrace uh, green economy. Looking at the transport, it's one of the sector, and we've we've submitted our commitment uh, also towards the, the the transport sector that we are going to reduce emission uh, resulted from the the all transport sectors and the things. So here there is also a number of opportunities for us to embrace the green economy growth uh, toward in the investment in the in the infrastructure, but also uh, bring more making an innovative. Uh, strategies and policies that bring private sector into the uh, private sector investment towards a uh, low carbon pathway transport transformation in Tanzania. So that's a, one of the things that we can do. Uh, looking at the agriculture, we can advance what uh, Sagot is doing, but also improve looking at the gaps that Sagot is experiencing, looking at, uh, at the challenge, maybe we can come up with more robust model of uh, promoting uh, resilient agriculture and farming across Tanzania. And it can be also again, uh, led by private sector government and the community, Com small, smallholder farmers, they are very important uh, toward achieving that. So uh, we have issues with uh, tourism, water resource management, and all issues that encompass the natural resource uh, management and efficiency, making sure that we using the resource that we have for maximum output without harming the environment. So uh, this is a topic in Tanzania now. It's a topic at the global level because of a lot of uh, global challenges, but there is no way we can run out of it, whether we are in or we are out. And if we are out, uh, we are going to miss a lot. It's like becoming now um, an island in a global community, which is not uh, a sustainable way of approaching things and, and development in a current setting. So um, I'll end by saying that uh, for us to be able to, to embrace and be able to, to, to achieve green economy, we really need a police framework and, and, uh, and uh, a very genuine willing uh, toward achieving or toward transition to just uh, just a uh, green economy in Tanzania, which is more inclusive, make sure that uh, all groups, the key groups are in, uh, involved as a part of the process, be it trade unions, be it uh, youth groups, women, uh, uh, consumers, we need sustainable uh, consumption, uh, private sector, we need sustainable um, production as well. So it's something that needs all people together, all stakeholders together. But for them to come together, we need government and, and uh, to be at the forefront, making sure that they're creating direction for us to be able to, to achieve all that. Thank you. Thank you very much.
um, Mr. Rio, for that uh, very inform informative and detailed presentation where you, you really come out um, swinging with, with very clear um, issues and even pointing to some key recommendations. You took us through the principles that are needed um, in terms of well-being, justice, efficiency. But then the last one that you pointed to was good governance. And I think here, some of our other panelists um, uh, will be able to, to speak on this in terms of what are our frameworks, uh, what institutional frameworks and, and legal and, and policy, uh, policy frameworks are in place to actually push this agenda forward. But she also pointed to the importance of uh, making sure that youth and women, this once again is really cross-cutting, um, but also you pointed to a very important group, which is the trade unions. I think that was something that uh, that that I flagged. Uh, but you went down to specific um, uh, sectors. You you went to the energy sector. You spoke about that. You, you went to, to waste management. You even went, went to agriculture. You spoke to NRM in general, natural resource management in general, in terms of water, tourism and the links uh, to green growth. And so you, you have opened up the floor uh, to our panelists to, to really reflect on this. Uh, we do have a youth panel, um, panelists as well. So I'll give him an opportunity, uh, not, not immediately, but after. So we'll also get to hear the voice of the youth. And we also do have um, a panelist who, who comes from, from the, the political, the governance background as well. So they'll also be able to give us some reflections based on the information that you have presented. But for now, I would like to, um, to turn to one of our panelists who I, I think would really um, be able to give insights and to reflect directly on what Mr. Rio has just presented. And so I'm going to now call up um, Mr. Mark Baker. Mr. Mark Baker, raised in Tanzania, is an experienced field biologist, a trained environmental scientist, and a dedicated lifelong conservationist. As a co-founder of Carbon Tanzania, Mark oversees all aspects of project design, development, and implementation, as well as managing collaboration with Carbon Tanzania CSOs, NGOs, and government partners. Uh, Mark founded Carbon Tanzania in 2007 as a response to the need to find innovative and long-term solutions to the degra uh, degradation of, of nature with a specific fo focus on deforestation. The organization is, in social, is a social enterprise that uses business principles to implement effective, efficient, and smart conservation solutions that enable local resource owners to manage the natural resources in a sustainable and economic uh, beneficial manner. Also important to note is Carbon Tanzania is the winner of the UNDP Equator Prize and IUCN Pathfinder Award. And before founding Carbon Tanzania, Mark worked in environmental impact assessment, wildlife environmental baseline service on many nature-based film, uh, film projects and in high-end ecotourism as a professional guide. I think most of us um, who are in this sector, uh, we know uh, of Mark and we, we've heard of Mark. So, Karibu sana, Mark. Asante. Um, yes, thank you very much and good morning, everybody. Um, you know, thanks to Pilot for Research team and to that excellent um, view from Chajil. We, we really, we've really worked from the top policy level now and we're moving towards the ground. And I think that's the important place where this conversation should be. Um, Carbon Tanzania is a business. We, we work with uh, village governments, with wildlife management area, with district and regional governments in three districts in Tanzania. Um, this year, we've transferred 4.4 billion shillings to 70,000 people within three districts. Um, and that revenue is spent on health, education, uh, the development of community conservation banks, um, in some cases used to backstop food requirements, and it also, of course, the cost of business to slow and, if possible, stop deforestation. And that's what I'm going to be talking about briefly today, stopping deforestation. Now, when we talk about deforestation, a lot of people think about charcoal and they think about timber. In sub-Saharan Africa, about 90% of deforestation is actually driven by shifting agriculture. And in Tanzania, it's about 85 to 90% based on the literature available. So shifting agriculture. So what drives that? Well, poverty, um, inequality, 
and a lack of social justice and generally poor governance. That's what drives deforestation. And that really speaks to what the green economy is. The green economy is about social and inclusivity, social justice. It's built, should be built on genuine shared prosperity and linked directly to the ecological environment. And that's what really separates the green economy from what we call, what we look at and say, well, this is the standard economy. It builds in all the externalities of business, of transport. And this was what Tadil was really getting to, which I think is a very important place to focus. Um, when we, in terms of what we do, we create this verified emission reduction. That's the value. So what we're selling to the external world, to the outside world, is called a verified emission reduction. And that verified emission reduction is based on third party validation and verification of what we call a carbon asset. Well, in this context, the carbon asset is the forest. And the asset itself, however, is built based on the carbon being there in the forest, but that's only about a third of it. The rest is built, is built on this genuine social inclusivity, genuine social justice. And as a business, we transfer 60% of gross to these communities. That's social justice, that's economic justice. And that's what the green economy can really mean for Tanzania. It can change the dynamic of how you think about what a business does in the context of a country like Tanzania, where perhaps 2%, perhaps 1% of that revenue is filtering down to the people who need it the most. We're reversing that. We have built an economic model that actually ensures that at least 50, and our target is always 60% of that revenue, is hitting those people on the ground. And that, when I say those people on the ground, I include district governments and um, the communities, the village governments, the ward governments that work underneath them. Um, and another point that's been brought up that I think is, is important is this word, this, this governance question. Um, you know, there is no longer a restriction or a limit to the availability of finance in this sector. And I can say this publicly. There is, we are getting contacted by people weekly who want to invest in us to invest in people in Tanzania and their forests. But of course, they're financial instruments and financial instruments look at something called risk. And when you talk about the research that you're doing, you talk about some of the challenges in governance, you talk about some of the legal frameworks for investment. Well, all that does is just flag up risk in terms of investment. So let's just, let me just finish off my point here by reflecting on what Tanzania like, looks like for that money. Well, from a forestry act and implementation of forest rights, Tanzania is probably one of the leading countries in the world. In terms of being able to engage with the village government and transfer revenue to people at a village level in Tanzania, probably one of the leading countries in the world. So we, we don't have to sit here and think that Tanzania moving into the green economy is going to take years and years of policy development. Much of that is already done. What we need to do is move beyond dialogue and move to action. And I think that is the key role that Carbon Tanzania is playing in Tanzania. We are working on the nuts and bolts. We are investing in communities and we are ensuring that those people most at need and most at risk of climate change are the ones that the beneficiaries in this example of the green economy in Tanzania. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for that um, insightful uh, presentation, introducing us to what you do uh, as Carbon Tanzania, but also um, painting the picture that in Tanzania, things are, things are not as dire as, as we may have imagined. Um, there are things in place and, and we're moving 
in the right direction, but as you rightly said at the very end, we just need to move beyond uh, dialogue, beyond the talk into action. Uh, so with that, I would now like to turn to our next um, uh, panelist who will bring us the voice of the youth. We have heard today that the youth is, is, is key, the youth is important. Uh, the youth, youth, the youth um, is really the way in which we will attain um, and reach all our development aspirations uh, as a country. Um, and all speakers today from the very beginning have pointed to the, the, the importance of not leaving, uh, leave, of leaving the youth out and not letting them have a, a voice, especially in the development agenda. So with that, um, I'd like to call on uh, Dixon Kam um, Kamala. Uh, Dixon, most of us know him. Uh, I, I've had the, the pleasure of hearing him speak on several uh, youth uh, summits and several events that uh, that I've worked with him. So he's, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored and pleased to be working with him again today. Um, he's a Tanzanian and a Pan-African youth leader. Uh, he really also works very hard um, in issues surrounding the East, uh, the East African um, community uh, on integration. Um, he also is the chair of SADC Youth Parliament Committee. He's a Pan-African Youth Leader, a Global Youth Ambassador, a Peace Ambassador, a Sustainable Devel Development Goal Ambassador, and just beyond active in terms of all things youth. Um, and so he, he really will bring that, that voice that I think we've been, we've been um, yearning to hear from today. So with that, I'd like to, to welcome Dixon. Dixon, Karibu Sana. Asante sana, uh, no, how can I just switch on my video? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Dixon. Okay, I'm trying to switch on my video. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Oh, you can just you can just proceed without if it's pro if it's uh, causing problems, uh, Dixon. Just proceed. Yeah, I see my video is not turning on. Um, okay, thank you so much for for the opportunity, and um, I I I actually needed to thank everybody who has joined the the conversation, but also. Uh, the presenters from uh, my brother Taj, Taj on um, on what he has presented, especially on how um, the community, the response, the stakeholders, and everyone in the in how they can make green economy work for the for the for the community. So uh, from the youth side, I think I have some few uh, points to 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 contribute. Um, so we have seen nowadays uh, in Dar es Salaam what's happened with that. Uh, we have the shortage of water, we have shortage of uh, electric uh, power. And uh, every time they will tell you it's because of the climate change. Uh, so there is a shortage of water and we can't have the production of uh, power uh, supply. So there is interdependence between uh, power and, uh, and the water supply in the, in the community. And if you look uh, on the uh, life cycle of the young people, we always depend on uh, production. Those who are in the private sector, we, we so much when you, when you wake up in the morning, you go outside, it's when you earn something that, you can, that can contribute to your survival. So if there is, uh, there is shortage of water and power, uh, sometimes it has caused a lot of chaos, but also the economic decline because uh, young people who are, for example, who are selling CDs, who are using computers uh, to develop programs and others, they have been so much affected by the situation. So I think uh, uh, we say climate change is really, is really in our community and it's really affecting us because we have started experiencing the, the situation uh, in our communities. So uh, the other time when we call for the community engagement, I think now is the time 
when we can have one voice and realize that the impact, that uh, the outcome of the, of the climate change, they are real and the climate change is really affecting everyone in the community. So when there is a, a COP, like when people, they are going for the conference to, um, to uh, negotiate, uh, debate and come up with a conclusion on how they are financing the uh, global south. A uh, few people had the chance to go to represent the young people, uh, the majority of them uh, in their conferences. But then uh, the question has been, how do the voice of young people uh, been represented during those conferences? And how exactly do they, how they have taken their responsibility or account to the voices of young people. Because now um, we can see uh, there is a lot of uh, outcomes of the meetings and the recommendation and the, uh, the big countries, they are putting more efforts on how they are going to support the global South. But the question is on how ways, what are the best ways can uh, directly engage the young people uh, in the process? So, uh, today we have, uh, I have heard from my brother Taj uh, explaining about the, the from the, uh, the COP and how they have uh, tried to formulate some of the institutions that are working in the country uh, to, uh, to support uh, or to uh, push the agenda of the, on how they can support the young people progress in the country. Uh, for example, the establishment of the uh, SAGOT, SAGOC uh, SGR, uh, B, uh, CBRT, uh, BRT uh, bus rapid transport, and uh, establishment of the uh, NEMC uh, uh, organization as the one superhead on the uh, supervising uh, or make the environmental policy work. But then, uh, if you look in that in the in the in the big eye, you will see uh, those are the are the national or international uh, frameworks or policies or tools that they have been uh, set up. But when you just go to the local community, for those people uh, who have been uh, affected by the by by the by the climate change, how do they make sure? How how do we make sure that we are bringing them in the in the in the in the, in, the, in the process where they can be able to engage or to participate or to really uh, engage in the process where they can be part of the green economy. Uh, for example, uh, if you just go to um, a lot of uh, places in Tanzania because a big number of young people in Tanzania, a big number of people in Tanzania are the farmers and they are depending on rain to uh, keep their uh, production. So if there is shortage of rain, for example, I'm coming from uh, north, part, north part of Tanzania, uh, uh, where uh, I grown up in the community where we depend on rains. So if there is no rains, which means there is no production, and the community is all actually basically uh, looking on that as means of production and survival. So if there is changes or when occurs of the changes in the in the system is always affected affect the people in the community so the question has been how does these uh, policies uh, does these uh, frameworks and um, uh, tools that have been implemented nationwide how do they intervene in the local community uh, no 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 not that but also if you just go to the to the, some of the, of, the, of the areas in the community where uh, you will find they are set up, setting up, they are trying to set up some of the, of the infrastructures that they can uh, accelerate to uh, people to engage in the green economy. Although uh, it's not that much that people, they have the knowledge uh, and the skills on how they can be part of the green economy in our country. But uh, in some way we have seen, uh, there are some steps uh, that have been uh, implemented or they are, they are, they are at least um, uh, 
pushing the, 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 the local community to engage in the process. For example, um, if you look on the, the chain system of the, um, uh, uh, this they call uh, the SORA project in our, in our community. So the SORA project you will see uh, there is this installment, they will create some of the employment because you need technicians, you will need uh, those who will do the services, the surveyors and the maps. At least in some way they have created the jobs for young people in some of the areas where there is no electricity, but they are trying to set up for the solar so that it can be a main of a, a source of power. But also uh, the other issue is on uh, um, organic farming. Uh, I've seen this since when I was young and uh, in our farms when we've grown up and still today is, is a part of their, of, their, of, their, of their normal life that they are, they are, they are, they are going, they are proceeding. But also um, issues like the environmental uh, protection. I've seen like currently in, uh, in the villages, there is this, the ward committees, environmental committees where they are setting up the some of the areas where to protect, for example, the uh, rain, the, the, the forest, that uh, they are so much protected uh, to preserve the environment in the villages. And I think that is the, the, the best one. But, the, uh, but if you look on the, on the other side, uh, I think we need to take more action on the issues that they are so much affecting the growth of the or engagement of the young people or the community on the, on the green economy. Uh, if you look, uh, I remember um, it was 2010, uh, we had the Minister of, uh, of Environment was uh, Honorable Makamba. He said uh, in Dar es Salaam, uh, in one day they are using five, um, uh, five tons of, of charcoal uh, and uh, charcoal is a product, everyone knows the process. So they are cutting down the trees um, and they are making, in, in the process is where they are, they are getting charcoal. But in the other hand, if you look on the, on the, on the, on the environment, uh, the cutting of the trees to produce charcoal is so much affecting the environment, but also it's affecting the ecosystem and the nature of the, of the community. So you will, you will come to realize like after some few years, we'll start facing again, even the areas that they were not experiencing the uh, highly uh, economic, highly climate change impacts. They will start experiencing them because of the production of the charcoal because there is high demand in the town. So I think it's an opportunity uh, for me uh, to on the, Police level, but also the government look on how uh, the stakeholders on how we can start now to create uh, better ways that they can uh, ensure us to to make sure that uh, we are utilizing the other opportunities like using of uh, um, other source of powers, other source of power to make sure that we are supplying the power and make sure that we are not using charcoal anymore uh, and. Um, in the in the in the process, I think uh, there is uh, uh, issues like biodiversity and others that we need to uh, promote and let the people engage. So I, I will give the last example. Um, I've been I've been uh, following on the ecosystem, especially around the areas where there is a conservation area like uh, national national parks or or uh, national reserves where uh, people around their communities they have, been, they have been empowered on how to engage in ecosystem and to, uh, to protect the environment, but also to utilize the, 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 the economic nature to generate income. So I'm thinking uh, for Tanzania, we need to have more uh, projects that they can empower their communities around their conservation areas. Because um, I saw the report when the minister of, uh, currently the minister of um, 
uh, Honorable General Makamba, when he was moving with the, <clears throat> with the helicopter, uh, making exploration around the area where uh, the rivers is passing. And uh, if you look at the picture, you will see the nature and how it has been affected. So this gives you the chance to see, uh, we need more projects on, on conservation, on how we can bring together the community to protect the, the, the nature and also to protect the, the conservation areas, for example, uh, the, where the rivers start to froze um, and how people they are using the water uh, and how we are using actually the water sources uh, to produce energy, but also recycling, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a big project. So we need to have uh, to empower the community, but also to let the community engage in their projects because at the end of the day, when, when, when we have the shortage of power or electricity, or when we are affected by climate change, for example, like uh, Dar es Salaam was so hot and now it's still hot, and everybody's asking like, yeah, we, did we do anything wrong or we sin against God? That's why he's punishing us. But in the reality, in the other, in the other eye, you will see some, it's an impact of climate change that's affecting everyone in the community. So we, we as, as, as I conclude, I think we need to, to now to sit down uh, as a, um, with the people, with every stakeholders, but also we need to look on how we can uh, make sure that we are bringing in the concept of working with the community uh, directly instead of working, instead of um, uh, setting up the national level instruments and forget that the people, uh, that they can contribute much to the or they can benefit much with the green economy are the people in the, in the grassroots areas where they can, in one way or other, they can contribute um, to protection of the ecosystem, but also they can be part and parcel of the, of the, of the uh, green economy. And at the national level, we have the instruments, but also let's make the instruments work for the, for the community because having the instruments that are not uh, working in the benefit of the people, uh, sometimes it's like useless documents. Uh, the one you just put in the, you do a research, a lot of researches, like I saw in my university, we are doing a lot of researches, but you will see them no working at any, at any time. So we need at least to have few instruments, but they're working for the community. They are, they are protecting the community, but also we are benefiting from the, from the, the, the researches that we are doing and the instruments that we're instructing. So uh, I think we need to uh, look uh, to bring, to call upon the people to contribute, the young people to contribute, but also to look on how we are utilizing the funds uh, from the Global North that they are, they, are, they are going to support for us. I heard the CRDB Bank uh, received a lot of money to help in the climate issues. But then the question is still there. How are, they, are the local community going to access that funds? Uh, because uh, most of the time you get the big financial institution uh, receiving the funds, but the local community are not uh, capable to comply on the compliance that have been asked from the bank to disburse the money uh, to go in the projects that where the people could benefit from. So um, this is the other area where we need to capacitate the community, to build the community, uh, to set up the infrastructure that they can enable the community to receive fund, but to be part and parcel of the, of the process. Because uh, when we provide the money, uh, from the Global North to help in uh, Global South to set up of infrastructure and engage on climate uh, change um, mitigation. So we need also to have the empowered community. So I think this is an opportunity for a lot of organizations to create a platform for the local community and to intervene so that we can be uh, in, uh, in a side when we can utilize this money and technical experts to make sure that we are, we are creating a sustainable community that is uh, part of green economy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dixon, and thank you for 
helping us to tie things together. I think we're starting to see a flow. We're starting to see um, threads of, of, of information and threads of, of issues that um, have started from, from our keynote presentation. So when you're talking about the importance of, of community involvement and, and not just pure representation, but actual um, meaningful um, involvement. Uh, I, I, I remembered, I, I went back to our keynote presenters, uh, uh, four principles in terms of well-being, justice, efficiency, and overall uh, good governance. And here also it speaks quite well, uh, Dixon, to what you're talking about in terms of the, the disconnect, um, what appears right now to be a disconnect between the national level uh, where there are some instruments in place, but then how then does that actually translate into practice on the ground? Um, and also your focus specifically on, on the community level, but with a, with a slant um, on youth. Uh, also, the, the, uh, I'd just like to point out that the conversations happening um, in the chat room are, are great. So, uh, please keep them going. And um, uh, the panelists, I can see already responding to them, which is great, but I'll just um, flag some. Um, comments at this point, which also have, have already speaking to, to some of the issues raised by our keynote presenter, uh, both Mark and, and Dixon. So the first comment, which I think is very general, but really um, begs us all to really critically examine uh, what we're talking about when you talk about a green economy um, and getting um, the country as a whole invested. Um, uh, one participant asked, what are actually the strategies to make consumers, and here I'm translating consumers to mean citizens as a whole, um, really care about climate change in developing countries, I guess, like, you know, like Tanzania. Uh, and they asked probably by educating them, but do you think this is plausible? Um, this participant feels like this is somewhat challenging in countries like Tanzania. So for example, one uses charcoal because he, she can't afford to use gas, not because they did not care about climate change. So this once again starts to, uh, to speak to the issues that have been raised um, in this particular case uh, by, by Dixon, but also in terms of uh, the bigger citizenry, like how we as, as Tanzanians um, understand and get engaged and, and then participate in this bigger discussion uh, around the, the green economy. And with that, I'd like to also now turn to, to address um, the gender dynamics that we've heard um, uh, significantly from, from, from the men, uh, our three presenters so far have been men. Uh, so I would now like to turn to Shose. Uh, Shose shared a, a comment with us yesterday. Uh, which I think is really uh, quite insightful, and it could uh, lead into her um, her discussion um, in terms of her thoughts. Uh, Shosa yesterday uh, said, Tanzania is one of the highest consumers of charcoal in the world. Once again, echoing some of the conversations that have already taken place. Um, she pointed out that 2 million tons of charcoal are consumed in Tanzania each year, with 50% of that used in the capital, Dar es Salaam. The demand for charcoal continues to rise, despite the fact that, that its use has led to massive increase in de de deforestation. According to the government data, the country with 41.1 million hectares of forest has highest rate of deforestation in the world due to the increasing demands for charcoal uh, used as a main energy. According to the Ministry of Energy, Dar es Salaam devours trees equivalent to 1,000 football fields a day. Uh, Tanzanian government has attempted to ban the use of charcoal since 2006, but has faced challenges, in her opinion, Shose's opinion, because there was no cost compar comparable alternative to charcoal for the masses. This represents massive opportunities, Shose believes. So Shose asked us yesterday, pre-event, what do you think needs to be done in order to meet this demand for low-cost energy? So Shose, um, you presented great stats, uh, good information, and you're challenging us. But before we now turn to some of the other panelists in terms of to answer your question, I'd like to welcome you uh, to give us more of your insights and thoughts, and especially as it's based on also what you have been hearing from the, from the session today. Karibu sana, Shose. I think you're still muted, uh, you're still muted. You're still muted. Yeah. 
No, we can't. We can't hear. Okay, maybe try again. Okay, we're still having troubles hearing you, Jose. But maybe as you're getting the technology um, organized and sorted, hopefully you'll be able to, to, to sort out the sound soon. I'd now like to call then um, another lady uh, from Sokoina University of Agriculture, uh, Ms. Judith uh, Valerian, who was with us in our previous event, but is joining us here again to, show, to share with us some, some of her insights based on once again, today's insightful um, conversation and information, but also based on the work that she's doing. Karibusana, Judith. Hello, uh, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, Judith Karibu. Thank you. Um, thank you for the highlights on, uh, from the keynote speaker on the green economy. And I would like to just share a bit um, uh, regarding uh, issues on agriculture and how all, all of this is connected. So um, the way I see this is that the green economy is um, actually uh, a model of economic development as well. And it has been um, uh, a longer time since Tanzania has already embarked on the journey towards uh, the green transformation as we have, we have heard from the keynote presentation. So my thinking is that looking into different agricultural value chains in Tanzania, we mainly focus on uh, manufacturing and consumption and use, and that's all. That's the main focus. And then we, we tend to leave out um, the waste that is produced through the whole value chain activities. That is from production of seeds to actually production of the food that we have on our tables. So um, these waste are contributing to environmental burdens, which are actually are going against the efforts of the green economy. So I'm thinking, what should we do? What can be done? So I'd like to, probably share a little bit on this uh, concept of cycle economy that we have started to use in, uh, in economics as well as in agriculture, which actually is also a model of economic development. And it tends to reduce the environmental risks by managing the natural resources <clears throat> more efficiently and effectively and also adapting the cleaner production methods. So the green growth uh, is focusing on, you know, redistribution of wealth and supporting the poor. So the aim is actually to improve the quality of life while we, you are ensuring the production processes and consumption patterns do not further damage uh, the environment. I will share with you, uh, Namwaka, so that you can share with the participant a small, um, a small uh, write-up on cycle economy, where you will see a difference between the linear economy model and the cycle economy model, <clears throat> so that it, it may, may be a little bit clear to the participants. So uh, uh, in this regard, maybe let me give a small example um, on one of the value chains that we worked with in like two years ago. And this was the size of value chain, which was, I mean, the influence was because the government is now refocusing in uh, making sure that we go back to SISO as the source of uh, fibers. So um, the operations in the SISO value chains is that the farmer will farm, sell the, uh, the SISO uh, leaves to the decorticating company or the, the processing companies where they will just uh, get the, uh, the yarns from, from the SISO and then take it to the processing, uh, uh, the bigger processing uh, factories where then they will process and sell uh, these uh, yarns to different countries. Yes, then my concern is on 
what that what happens from the farming up to when we get the yarns to to go to the manufacturing companies we have a lot of waste almost uh, from the leaves you find that you might just get only 10 to 12 percent of the of the output from that particular leaves leaving all of the of the uh, waste behind and this waste in the normal uh, the coach getting companies are just thrown in the pits and let they let left there just to decay and um, in the process they produce a lot of methane and other um, other other gases that are depleting the environment but again why why circular economy is that instead of leaving that uh, particular waste to just decay by itself there are technologies that can be uh, utilized to use the waste and produce electricity, for instance. And the electricity is even stronger that can be supplied to the national grid. So that way, a balancing between um, employing the cycle economy uh, perspectives to actually help and protect the environment. And this, uh, for example, this has been done in the Halle Estate. Uh, in Tanga that was uh, introduced a couple of years ago. So there is a possibility of turning the agricultural value chains, uh, the, the normal way they, they are functioning into incorporating the cycle economy perspective so that we can enhance the green economy that is being um, advocated to, uh, to uh, actually uh, make sure that the agriculture sector is even collaborating in the efforts that we are we are we are talking about here today. So I think that's it uh, from me, Namwaka. I hope I have been able to contribute something. Yes, absolutely, Judith. And once again, thank you. Um, thank you for for jumping in there with concrete examples and and also for really using the agricultural yeah. sector uh, to illustrate. Um, practical ways, and, and, I, and I believe you said that you will share with me um, the model or the, the, the paper or the presentation, and we can also then share that with participants in terms of how really the agriculture sector can, can be a, a very important tool um, if utilized properly in, ter in terms of pushing the, the green economy agenda forward. So once again, thank you, and we look forward to, to getting that information from you so we can share and especially also the example that you gave us using the sisal value chain. I think that also will be quite um, informative, informative and interesting for us. I think we're used to, to, to hearing about the charcoal value chain and I'm even seeing the, the conversation, some of the conversations in the chat um, are pointing to the charcoal value chain. It'll also get, it'll also be really important and key to, to, to hear um, and to know information about other uh, uh, key value chains as well in the ag sector that can, um, that can that can be used to inform us and to teach us as to examples of how we can use the agriculture sector uh, to push the green um, economy uh, forward. Uh, so thank you once again, Judith. Um, Shose, have you have you managed to to sort out the the, the sound? Uh, you will have to tell me. Can you hear me? Oh, now? perfect. You're perfect. So thank you, Karibu Sana. <laughs> Thank you. I had to switch to my mobile phone. I don't know what happened with my laptop. Poorly, poorly. It's all right. It's all right. No, thank you very much. And I'm glad that um, my sister talked uh, before me because she basically touched on exactly what um, our thought process uh, is at Kuzeni. Um, I think if, if we look at everyone's contribution, um, it's a balancing act. Uh, you know, we've got to balance affordability for the masses. We've got to balance accessibility. And we also have to balance sustainability, meaning inclusivity, and obviously growing everyone's economy. I mean, every, growing the economy really at grassroots levels. Um, and I think once you do that, that is when you can now uh, incorporate behavioral change campaign. Because I think, as you had mentioned before, uh, for a normal uh, uh, citizen, if, if you look at the numbers, the statistics that we're looking at, it's a massive amount of people who are using charcoal, even in, uh, in a city like Dar es Salaam that consumes 50%. Of, of the forests um, that, that are being burned for, for charcoal. And so you ask yourself, uh, you know, we, we need to have an alternative. I remember in 2006 when the government had introduced the ban at that time, 
um, you know, it, it, they, they had to they had to uh, to reinstate it again. You know, to reinstate the use of charcoal because there was no uh, affordable alternative. And I think that's where the opportunity comes. Um, there are talks of uh, using agricultural waste. Um, Kuzeni, uh, one of our primary focus, uh, because we 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 really are more focused on the agriculture sector, is to use this massive waste that is being thrown away. Tanzania is the food basket of East Africa. We produce, uh, you know, uh, thousands of tons of whether it's maize, whether it's sugarcane or sisal, uh, yet we burn or throw away majority of that. And I think if we are able to, um, you know, through partnerships, uh, have um, uh, what you call them factories, you know, have uh, low cost sustainable factories, and then you, you link with good distribution for accessibility, then you'll be able to provide alternatives, of course, subject to the fact that it must be at least a fraction of what charcoal costs now. So I think the challenge will be affordability and accessibility, and then sustainability, meaning that you include the same farmers who actually employ 75, 80% of our youth, of our women, of our population, uh, to be participants. A, they will give them a, an alternative source of income instead of burning, you know, their um, their crops after harvest. Uh, they can earn more money and you're not then remitting sort of carbon dioxide into the air. So I think the key will be having an ecosystem that is inclusive, but then really turning waste into, into gold. Thank you very much. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll just like to borrow the, your last um, turning waste into gold. I think that that is something that um, that will stick to me as, as we move today. But also two words um, that uh, you, you point to, which is also key, affordability and accessibility. I think that also speaks to the larger discussion that we're having today in terms of how inclusive, when we're talking about green, green um, economy, really, how, how are we going to ensure that this is really inclusive, especially for women and especially for, um, uh, for youth? Uh, we have a comment uh, saying that, you know, everybody should understand that climate change impacts are largely felt by women. They occupy a bigger percent in agriculture production than men, but also their carrying roles becomes more tedious with deforestation. So that really also speaks to uh, show say what you're, you're what you're just pointing to, but also links to Kamala's points and, and just overall the importance of making sure that our um, our focus uh, identifies and recognizes the, the central role that women play in, in this discussion, and and then how do we engage them. Um, another participant also had pointed out that it's not when it, when when discussing youth that it's not just representation, and this um, then begs the questions of what type of representation is it? Quality representation, and at what stage and what level um, are youth and women represented? And then what? How is information pitched uh, to these particular groups in terms to make sure that they fully understand um, what all of this means and their role? So um, as I turn to introduce our next uh, panelist, who most of us, I think all of us in this um, session here knows, uh, I would like to um, put it in context of a um, participant's um, very clear directive in terms of what they think in terms of what Tanzania needs uh, going forward for, for the green economy. One panelist, uh, not panelist, participant said, going forward for the green economy our country, Tanzania needs, one, effective national assessment of the implications of policy options and choices based on our country. Two, strategic partnerships and collaboration of public and private sectors. Three, to, for us to have a national coordination structure involving multiple actors from public and private sectors. Four, structures and mental mo models that will change mindset, behavior, and attitude on addressing climate change and environmental issues. Five, green taxonomy framework for identification of green activities. And lastly, six, enhance financial inclusion, increasing um, increased uh, 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 savings, a uh, culture of savings, credit insurance as tool for building resilience from the adverse impacts of climate change to low income people. This is very clear, very, six very clear points. This is what one of our participants feels that our country needs. With that, especially as a lot of these things also tie in with the governance and 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 issues at a very at, at a higher level in terms of um, policy and frameworks, I'd now like to turn to um, one of our very exciting um, panelists, 
We have with us today, um, Honorable Mwishimu Zito Kabwe, um, the party leader for Alliance of Change and Transparency at Wazalendo, and a former member of parliament. We all know Zito Kabwe, Honorable. And, and in his passion, like, I think this is, I would argue, <laughs> one of our most passionate uh, speakers and, and, and you can tell his love for Tanzania and for our country in terms of our development and the vision that he has uh, and what he feels that um, should be in place, the ingredients and the tools that we need to have in place for us to really attain our development aspirations. So with that, and once again, against this backdrop, ba the background of this one participant who really was clear in the six points as to this is what we need. Honorable Zito Kabwe, Karibu Sana, Thank you very much. And for a very, very beautiful introduction. Thank you so much, Nawaka. Yeah, um, it is a really a, a learning process. Uh, and I've really learned uh, new things uh, to look after uh, uh, in, the, in the future. But I would like to not respond to the issues that have been raised by uh, one of the participants about the effect effectiveness of national assessment, collaboration, behavior change, taxonomy, saving culture. But I would like to bring you back to what the, uh, the main speaker spoke at the beginning about having a dedicated policy to guide the national development. I think um, for me, this is a takeaway from this discussion because uh, there have been uh, efforts towards uh, or transiting to a green economy in Tanzania through various actions, but not guided by uh, a specific policy. And I think uh, uh, we should work uh, towards that. Uh, we have uh, spoken here about the the reality of climate change and the threats to the economy. Uh, uh, Kamala spoke about the threat to food security, and it is really it is happening. Uh, this year, uh, the Minister for Agriculture uh, quoting the Meteorological uh, Authority uh, said that we are going to have uh, uh, drought. And obviously, uh, next year we are, have, we are going to have uh, food shortages, like other shortages that we are uh, we are getting now. We have experienced now the shortage of water, uh, and clearly this is due to uh, uh, to not only the climate change but also the behavior uh, of people uh, and the the competition between livelihood and the need. For, um, for the uh, stability of the ecology. And all these things are happening on our own eyes. So it's not like we are theorizing. These are practical uh, things uh, happening uh, in the country and the threats are obvious. So I would really, really uh, comment uh, the whole idea or suggestion about the dedicated policy to guide uh, uh, national development. And I think one of the things that that dedicated policy have to take into consideration is the six points that uh, Namwaka you have, uh, you have raised from a participant, but also uh, looking at the opportunities. Uh, one participant here spoke about now the world is moving into EV, the electric vehicles. And uh, it is an opportunity for a country like Tanzania to tap uh, into that uh, and be able to, uh, to benefit from the supply chain towards the, uh, the electric uh, vehicles. So all these kind of things have to be taken into consideration in the development of the, the so-called dedicated policy to guide the, the national development in order to mainstream the, uh, the, uh, the green economy. But also we have to look into the, the, the green finance. And uh, I'm happy that there was a speaker uh, here about, the, uh, about carbon uh, credits, uh, if I, I have referred to it well. And uh, we have to find a way or, uh, to start a conversation 
with our financial institutions uh, regarding uh, green finance. I understand that globally there are these kind of initiatives. And I also saw that uh, one of our local bank uh, 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 go to uh, support financial support in order to support the smart agriculture and things like that but uh, we need to build uh, this uh, more so that we have more uh, green assets in the portfolio of the financial institutions and i think this uh, will will add a lot because all of us understand that uh, there is a huge cost of tran uh, transition very, very huge, huge cost of transition. And we are told that uh, funds are available uh, globally, but how do we make this a reality and make sure that uh, we, we really uh, move towards, uh, the, towards the, green, uh, the green economy? Um, there was a much discussion and Shosha spoke about the use of charcoal and there was a discussion uh, from other participants uh, in the chat room and also uh, those who spoke about the, the, the use of charcoal. And um, there have been efforts to uh, massively reduce uh, the use of charcoal, but still not yet. Uh, and uh, even near, even 1% uh, success is not yet there. Uh, because of the costs uh, and uh, charcoal is uh, livelihood of people. Uh, uh, the use of uh, wood is uh, the, one of the largest source of energy for people in rural, in rural areas. How do we want them to, to transit? There are various options. Some of them are a little bit cheaper using uh, the, the cow dung and examples given here, using the waste and making uh, the charcoal uh, and not uh, and reducing cutting of forests, but all these uh, need to be mainstreamed into the dedicated policy uh, to guide the national development. There are efforts also to increase the use of uh, the LPG. LPG is not zero in emissions, but it, uh, uh, it is more advantageous than uh, the cutting down uh, of trees. Uh, but uh, I just saw recently, yesterday, I think, on the rise of prices of LPGs. How is the country going to address this with the enormous source of, uh, of uh, natural gas that we have? And we know that uh, LPG is just a byproduct in the processes of, uh, of uh, uh, natural gas uh, so we have to, uh, and I come back to the to the to the point of uh, having a dedicated policy because that will address all these things, and through that uh, the collaboration between the public sector, private sector, and communities will be enhanced for the desired outcome that that we want. Uh, those are my uh, the points that I wanted to make. Thank you very much. Asante Sana, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Zito Kabwe, for bringing us back to the importance of having that framework at the national level, really tying all of these conversations where we're, yes, we've had pan panelists and participants who are looking at what needs to take place um, at the grassroots level, at the community level, but then this cannot be disconnected from what is happening at the policy level, which sits, which um, arguably, once again, it sets the tone. Um, we cannot have these discussions without, um, without thinking about the policy and regulatory and institutional frameworks that then allows us for um, uh, allows us to move the whole um, agenda forward because this is this is also national agenda. It's not just a community level agenda or a specific one NGO CSO private sector agenda. It really is a national agenda. But the the, the one um, word that I think has stuck out in uh, in in your presentation, Moshimiwa, is the word of uh, the word transition. Um, I think you used it three, four times, um, signaling that we really, this really is a transition and it has to be managed um, and, and we also have to be patient and understand that in this transition, there are very many factors that have to be um, thought through, that have to be accommodated, and then they have to find practical solutions. Uh, you pointed to some of the solutions that have been presented from here today, but also, you know, the using of cow dung, for example, waste, um, uh, but also the, the, the dependence that we have as a country on, on charcoal and wood as our primary uh, sources. 
um, once again, you asked, how do we make the transition? So I think in all of our discussions here today, um, this is something that I am asking myself, but we should also ask ourselves going forward, how are we really then making um, the transitions and what, uh, what is in place at the national level in terms of our policies and our frameworks in order to also facilitate this transition to happen at the community level, which is most of you, or most of you have, have spoken about. And, and honorable, um, Zito Kabwe, you also pointed to the, yes, the importance of having that one big policy and then it be mainstream. This is great. Uh, one participant, however, uh, also alerted uh, to the fact that most of the suggestions and the recommendations um, uh, that are coming from this discussion today, most of them center also center on the allocation of resources. And I think here, Mr. Uh, Rio, our keynote presenter also pointed to that. Even with the policy, there also needs to be the budgetary uh, reflection. The budgets need to match what uh, the government is saying in terms of moving towards a green economy. So the, the, the one participant said, you know, acknowledging that most of the, the suggestions and what we're talking about here center on reallocation of resources from the government side. Are there any efforts to make inroads in government departments and ministries and, and, and to lobby for, and, and, or lobbying for this um, reallocation? I think this is a bigger question. Uh, I, I won't just put you on, on the spot, Honorable, but um, I think this is something that we also uh, we need to think about um, in terms of, yes, when we're talking about policy, yes, but then we cannot forget the money. And especially, as you rightly said, Moishimiwa, that um, all of this is very expensive. Um, the the green financing is extremely expensive. And although there are global instruments available in terms of global funding, but how actually can we as Tanzania access them? And I think um, uh, Kamala also pointed to some of the challenges just internally in Tanzania where uh, CRDB Bank, I think one of our, our local banks um, has some climate um, green finances uh, available, but however, who actually can access this? So these are once again, uh, bigger questions for us to, uh, to think about. But as we think about, especially the role of the government here, I would now like to turn to our final pa official panelists um, who comes from the government um, to, to give us a sense of, of when we're talking about policies, when we're talking about frameworks, when we're talking about um, things being in place for, for this agenda to move forward, what are some of the initiatives coming from, from the government? So here I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Frederick Mulinda. He's a senior environmental management officer um, and the coordinator of the Adaptation Fund um, at the National Environmental Management Council, NEMC headquarters. He's very well versed in, in all issues of environmental management and holds a master's of science degree in integrated environmental management from the University of Dar es Salaam. With this, I would like to uh, turn now and welcome Mr. Mulinda Karibusana. Uh, uh, sana Namwaka, thanks for the invite. Um, well, uh, uh, I first of all want to really appreciate the previous uh, speakers who have uh, done an excellent work. Uh, Mr. Tajil, Mark, Kamala, Judith, Shose, and Honorable Kabwe. Uh, I find myself in a position to even uh, be able to quote uh, some of the uh, wonderful statements that they have made, uh, having been uh, almost the last speaker. But, um, well, I want to start with uh, this statement from uh, Mark, and uh, I think this is the quote of the day. Uh, Mark said, much of the police development has been done. We need to move to action. <laughs> uh, this sounds very interesting because uh, uh, although, uh, as we have heard from the keynote speaker, we don't have a, a standalone, a specific uh, policy on green economy, neither do we have uh, an operational definition uh, of green economy uh, at a national level, but I want to really uh, show uh, or say that something has been uh, ongoing from uh, all way back 1972 uh, from the uh, Stockholm conference uh, to the Rio summit 
uh, to date, a lot ha has been done in terms of uh, uh, what the government is doing towards uh, uh, green economy. I work for the National Environmental Management Council, as said, and uh, uh, if I, I may start with that, uh, NEMC uh, guides or regulates all major uh, investments in, in the country uh, so that they will operate in an environmentally uh, responsive manner, uh, in a manner that will uh, uh, see that our ecosystems are conserved, uh, the degraded ecosystems are restored, the biodiversity is protected, the emissions are reduced, the pollutions to the water sources, to the air uh, are mitigated. Uh, firms operate in a, a cleaner production manner. Uh, and uh, not only that, but uh, the Environmental Management Act, which establishes uh, uh, NEMC, uh, provides for environmental audit that goes uh, way back to the investments that were made even before the enactment of the act to uh, review them, uh, to audit them and uh, to see that the activities also are framed uh, so that they will uh, act in a way that uh, our environment uh, is protected. Uh, all those are the efforts that lead the country towards uh, green uh, economy or low uh, carbon uh, pathway. If we have to agree with each other that uh, green economy presupposes low carbon uh, a pathway, resource efficiency, uh, social inclusivity, or eco, eco civilization construction, uh, then we will agree that uh, the country of Tanzania uh, is doing something about, about this. And uh, by saying that, I'm not trying by any means to downplay the need for uh, a, a dedicated policy on the green economy, but I'm trying to share what is already uh, available on the, on the ground and uh, that we may have to leverage on uh, as we continue to uh, grow uh, towards uh, 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 reduced emissions uh, or low carbon uh, pathway. Uh, well, there's been quite uh, a number of activities that uh, uh, are reflected in the programs that are carried out by the, the country. A, a friend has spoken about SAGOT. Uh, I, I don't come from agriculture, but uh, I, I think SAGOT has done a lot. Uh, and actually, it has also given rise to more uh, policies uh, in the agricultural sector, like the uh, Agriculture Climate Resilient Plan, uh, the Climate Smart uh, Agriculture Program and Guideline. Uh, all those contribute significantly towards uh, uh, green uh, economy. But uh, we have had such a program like uh, RED, that's remusion, uh, Reduced Emission from Deforestation and Forest Degradation. And uh, in a, we all know that global deforestation is a leading cause of global environmental changes, uh, contributing to about 20% of the greenhouse gases emission globally. And in a country like Tanzania, uh, where <coughs> deforestation rate uh, is estimated at more than uh, 400 acres, hectares uh, of forest being cleared per year, uh, we cannot. Uh, we, we cannot take it lightly because deforestation is second to energy sector in uh, production of greenhouse gases uh, yeah, in the global budget of the emission. So RED has uh, really uh, provided some uh, uh, input in uh, protecting the forest, uh, uh, preventing the degradation, restoring the degraded forest, and uh, it has even given rise to such uh, other uh, initiatives like uh, the participatory forest management through community-based forest management, which help uh, put in place uh, uh, relatively advanced uh, institutions and policies and strategies that foster uh, sustainable forest management. But, uh, well, 
Tanzania has got a number of other um, policies like vision, uh, development vision 2025, the five-year development plans, the national uh, strategy for growth and poverty alleviation. Uh, they all, uh, if you scan them, you will realize that they all embody some elements uh, of green economy, despite the lack of, uh, of a standalone uh, policy. Uh, uh, Honorable Zito has uh, <coughs> Uh, used uh, a word of uh, that you uh, Namaka also highlighted on uh, transition as a nation as a nation we're transiting towards uh, uh, full implementation of uh, green economy uh, uh, policy. Uh, if I may uh, just uh, highlight on a few things that are ongoing in the country. Uh, um, uh, like on the side of environment and climate, the government has already uh, uh, ha had its own uh, national climate change strategy and it started way back in 2012. And now we have an updated strategy of 2021. Uh, but also the country has submitted the nationally determined contribution, which stipulates actions that support Tanzania to achieve the envisaged green economy. Um, well, uh, the government also encourages investment in a renewable energy and has streamlined, for example, at NEMP, we have streamlined uh, even the environmental clearance processes uh, for green uh, or for renewable energy projects. Uh, that are at 50 megawatts and below. Uh, we have shortened the process as a way of encouraging the investors, but to also advise uh, various investors uh, on the best, uh, uh, you know, sources of energy to uh, use in the operations. Uh, well, I know we've talked of. Uh, the principle of inclusiveness being uh, as one of the principles of green economy, uh, the government has put in place guidelines uh, to mainstream gender environment, gender in the environment uh, and climate change. We have, uh, well, uh, as I said, we have the strategy that also uh, ensures protection of the environment and the mitigation of climate change. Um, but, uh, more importantly, more importantly, uh, and that speaks this this one point speaks louder than, than the rest. The government of Tanzania has shown strong leadership and commitment towards uh, greening the economy, having Her Excellency uh, Samia Suru Hassan lead the delegation of Tanzania in the just ended uh, COP26. So, uh, what I think. Uh, we need to leverage on the already existing efforts uh, that contribute towards green economy uh, and also buy in, uh, inform the policy uh, makers where possible to have a standalone uh, policy on green economy that will uh, very well define uh, the actions that the, the nation puts in place to achieve the, 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 the economy. Green economy, we all agree that it's a relatively new phenomenon and uh, it may need time and uh, a gradual uptake as awareness uh, keeps uh, building up among the government and uh, the decision makers uh, in order that they will uh, finally take it up and uh, uh, establish, it as, establish it as a uh, as one of the oh, international policies. So, um, well, in addition, I would say that Tanzania has uh, built the capacities of some of its institutions. I, I think uh, Honorable Kabu uh, highlighted on uh, uh, the CRDB Bank being accredited to Green Climate Fund. And I know there is quite a number of other institutions in the accreditation process, including NEMC itself. But NEMC is already accredited to adaptation fund, and uh, we have helped the country to access a few resources that are geared towards uh, 
helping uh, our communities uh, build resilience uh, in climate uh, change, but also they have uh, some uh, mitigation for benefits. Um, Tanzania actually has accessed almost uh, greater funds uh, from the uh, global uh, environmental funds than any other developing country uh, in the world. Uh, like uh, uh, it has access, to, or maybe in Africa, if I may say so, it has access to more than 300 uh, uh, million US dollars in, the, in, the, in various projects combined together that really address the uh, issue of climate change. And uh, that shows that some efforts are, are being done. I would encourage everyone to uh, leverage on the, uh, on the already available uh, legal and institutional framework to contribute uh, from their points of operation towards uh, a greener uh, economy. Uh, having said that, I really want to thank you. That's a few points that I, I, I wanted to make in addition to uh, what uh, the rest have said. Thank you very much. As Santa Sana Frederick, um, and I think that that was a much, very much needed, um, almost like a summing up, uh, a full circle moment uh, in, in really bringing home some of the initiatives that are actually are already in, in, in place uh, and that our government, as the Tanzanian government, uh, is very aware, and, and there and there and there are steps and strides uh, towards moving this agenda forward. Um, you pointed to some of the initiatives that you, you know you pointed to, to red. Um, you pointed to an example of the participatory participatory forest management, um, which fosters a sustainable forest manager as examples of some things that have been done or are, are taking place that, that are pushing things forward. You talked about the, the e, um, EIAs that you do in, in them, for example, but then when you brought it back up to the larger frameworks in place in, in the government, we talk about our vision 2025, you talk about our five-year development um, uh, plan, and you talk about the, 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 all the other, all the big national strategies, uh, development uh, plans, um, all of them do have um, elements of green economy. And even if not stated explicitly, but that's really what the, the spirit, uh, the spirit is there. But then it, it really brings us back to uh, another bigger issue of uh, coordination um, within and amongst uh, our government. Um, and, uh, and are all these policies, are they really speaking to each other? So once again, it's an issue of co collaboration and issues to how to ensure that these policies are, are working together and we are moving in the right direction. Um, you talked about the fact that we do have a national climate change uh, a strategy from 2012 and that's being updated this year as we speak. And that at Tanzania, we did submit in July 2021 our NDCs. So as a country, you know, we, we see that there's a, there is political will. You rightly pointed to the fact that um, our president, Mama Samir, um, headed the Tanzania delega delegation to the most recent uh, COP. Um, so there's, there's, there's this political uh, dedication, this political movement and, and, and an element of political will. But then you pointed to, to three key things that we need to, um, we need to I guess temper our own expectations or manage our own expectations and, and the importance of time, um, which once again, this really, um, I think uh, speaks to also what Honorable Zita Kabo has um, kept stressing about our transition, how we transitioning. The transition will take time and it needs time, but for us to understand that as it takes time, as we need that time and as we're going through that time, what exactly, what are we doing? What are we doing to make sure that we're pushing the wheel along? Um, you also spoke about a gradual uptake. Uh, here, I also, I want to marry this with the conversations that have been happening on the chat in terms of how do we get the communities, how do we get the citizenry um, involved? So you have, are coming from the government standpoint, but I think that uptake also comes from us as, as citizens, as normal citizens, you know, the day-to-day -day lives, you know, once again, talking about how, how, how do people transition from excessive use of charcoal, uh, cutting down um, excessive uh, trees for, 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 uh, for, 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 for energy? How do we manage our waste? You know, and this is right down to the household level. Um, but then also in terms of, you also spoke to us, as much as there is a political will at the very high high level, I think the number one office, um, we also need to 
have a political appetite, um, meaning that other players in the in the in the policy spaces also need to have an appetite for this, and 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 to to then be able to move in the same uh, that, uh, direction. But I think a really sobering point for me is your conclusion, where you asked us to actually leverage on the already existing policy legal framework. So I think as we have these discussions. Um, it's just also important for us to understand that we're not operating in a vacuum. Uh, there are some things and, 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 and instruments in place. And for those that we can use um, and can be leveraged, um, as Frederick has rightly asked of us, uh, we should uh, leverage and use existing um, frameworks for the for the for the frameworks or for the policies and for the for the laws, the acts, regulations, which are not working. Uh, there are also uh, processes in place that can lead us to the creation or the improvement or the review of those um, instruments for them to work for us. So I think this, I think for me, I guess it is sobering because it it put, it's really puts it back to the context that we're not operating in a vacuum. Um, this is something that, that the wheels are in motion and we're moving in that direction, but it's just how we're moving, are we moving together? Is there collaboration? Is there cooperation? Um, and so, yes, the chat is very active and um, it's fantastic. And so now I'd like to uh, to open, um, open the floor to the panelists again. There's been a lot of questions directed to, to panelists uh, from our keynote speaker to Honorable Tokabwe to Mark. Um, some of you have been responding directly with very with good responses, but I just think um, we do have time. I would like to take, um, to open it back, we'll take it back to our keynote speaker and then to the panelists to reflect on some of the issues and the questions that have come up. I will just highlight some. Um, for example, to Mark, uh, you, one participant uh, pointed out you made a thought-provoking remark about slash and burn practices for clearing new agriculture terrain. The, do I understand well, you well, that this means that this practice is far more damaging than harvesting of coal. There's also been discussions of, uh, about uh, coal, Mark, that you have been responding to. But also, Mark, there was a question from... Uh, from my friend Elsie about the capacity. I think that this came up right uh, right after your your um, your initial reflection, uh, where Elsie um, pointed to uh, and uh, rather expressed that I found she found it rather technical and made her wonder about capacity to exploit the conducive framework in Tanzania for investment in deforestation. How much human capacity do we have? Uh, people are always capable and interested in navigating this situation for the benefit of communities in Tanzania. In effect, are, are there many social enterprises like Carbon Tanzania, or is that an area for, of potential growth that we could direct youth towards as a possible career op, um, option? I always, um, I, I'm biased here, I always uh, tend to, to like uh, Elsie's mind. Uh, she tends to ask very very, very thought-provoking questions. So those were um, some of the issues and areas for Mark. Uh, for Mr. Rio, our, our keynote, uh, of course, overall the strategies that are in place, uh, you responded to that. Um, there are also an issue of uh, consumer and green growth uh, as, a, as a cultural issue. How do we uh, sensitize? How do we push this agenda forward to the broader um, uh, Tanzanian uh, society? There was also, for example, a question for Honorable Zito Kukabwe um, asking how, what are the avenues for activi activism, for example, um, pre present? And of course, this is picking on your brain as uh, in, your, in, your, in your experience in this area. Um, so yes, i will now like to turn back to firstly our keynote presenter and just give you time to re-re-reflect <laughs> or maybe um, stress on some of the comments that, that you have um, already responded to, uh, but also just uh, to, to give participants once again, an overall uh, feel and your, your, your high level, big picture recommendations. And I'll take, take the key takeaways from this session. Karibu sana. Asante uh, sana. Thank you all again. And I really appreciate the discussion. It's really hot and uh, there is a lot of vibes I can see. So, uh, well, one of the things that I want to reflect is the understanding that uh, globally we are trying to move towards net zero by the mid of century, uh, by 2050. Why, why are we moving towards net zero? By the way, 
Net zero means uh, the greenhouse gas emission that we're emitting from our economic, social, and energy activity will be equal to one that we uh, we uh, do sink, carbon sink. So it will be like the balance between emission and the carbon sink. That's what I mean by net zero. So uh, looking at the, the global trending of global warming and the need for action, uh, every country needs to do more toward the achieving uh, at, and the limiting global temperature is at least 1.5 or well below two degree uh, by 2050 or the end of the century. Uh, recently, actually this month, uh, during the uh, COP26 in the Glasgow, uh, there was a report uh, that analyzed the national determined contribution. These this are the commitments submitted by nationals uh, to show how are they going to, to implement Paris Agreement. So with all uh, reports and commitments received from parties, they showed that they are not going to limit the global warming to 1.5, rather than they're going to make it rise to 2.7 degrees, which is far, far beyond the, the, the limit of Paris Agreement. So we need to do more. And that's why the, the agenda of uh, green economy, transition to green economy, is a must, and there is no way we can run uh, out of it. And now, uh, we have our NDC, as I said earlier, and uh, echoed by other speakers. Uh, yes, it's conditional. We need uh, climate financing to make it uh, real and lo to localize it. But we have to understand that access to climate finance uh, is not an easy thing. It's a developing country, small island developing states, they are also fighting to get this uh, funding and they are limited despite the fact that this fund, they are not aid, they are actually, uh, they are supposed to be given uh, by developed countries to developing countries because of the historical responsibility on a greenhouse gas emission. So uh, as it turns in here, we have to embrace uh, this internationalism engagement uh, toward achieving and accessing the reliable and sustainable climate finance from this body. Uh, from the chat, I saw that uh, there's a lot of hope about the Sierra DB uh, funding from the GCF. So it's good to know that the, the fund from Sierra DB, it only look at the small farmers, uh, medium and larger enterprise working in the crop farming, and they're going to, to support the adaptation process and, and, uh, and the resilience in agriculture. So it's basically for uh, food, crop farming, so, and the value chain around that. But also, uh, yes, again, on the dedicated policy about the providing the roadmap and um, how are we going to, to do our smooth transition to green economy. Uh, I understand there is a lot of initiative, as I said earlier, but again, I, I reinforce that we, we, we really need a dedicated a roadmap, policy, a strategy, and anything that can guide our national uh, uh, transition toward the green economy. And I'm saying this because uh, with this transition, a lot of things that are going to happen. There's a lot of changes uh, uh, that will need people to understand as a part of consumer, as women, as youth, but also as a, as a, as I said earlier, the trade unions. These are people can be, can either be positive toward the, the green economy or they can have a lot of negativity about the green economy. We depend on how the transition will impact the, their, their working modality and everything. So we really need everyone on board. Um, so that's all. And uh, or maybe one more thing. Well, so uh, the transition to green economy, it has to be inclusive and make sure that everyone is on board uh, with the principle or with the slogan of leaving no one behind because it's, a, it's, a, it's something that needs to bring all people, balancing the environment sustainability, the social sustainability, and the economic growth. All three things need to balance for us to achieve uh, the green economy. Thank you. Thank you very much for expanding on some of your um, active responses that you've been providing to our participants in the, on the chat. 
Um, and yes, uh, a wealth of information. And I believe that um, uh, most or some have already asked for your for your direct uh, contact. So I believe that you will continue sharing um, access to the information that you have and the knowledge that you have, uh, and also speaking in platforms such as this, so that you, we can all get to hear and understand better the, the broader and the bigger issues. Um, so thank you for for clarification and thank you for adding um, on to some of the points that uh, that have been raised in in the chat. I would now like to turn to to Mark. Uh, Mark, um, you've been very active in the chat. Thank you very much. You've been responding almost immediately to all, all things directed to you, but also in um, in um, in any of the comments or questions that that you can respond to. But I'd like to now give you this platform so you can um, maybe expand a little bit more on some of the key points that you've seen raised or directed to you, um, and then just provide us with um, also some of your your final. Um, your thoughts for us to, to, to take home out the messages from you. Karibu Sana, Mark. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for everyone. This has been a really, really powerful meeting and it's great that there are so many people here from NGOs, from, from the government um, who are here to you know, have this honest discussion. I mean, I think Tajil just touched on a lot of those um, a lot of those points quite well. I mean, there's a couple of things I would like to I would like to add. Uh, the word transition is really, really important in this discussion. And so let's not just use it and carry on going because it's absolutely right. This is a transition. This is what we have decided as a global community at COP. These issues around what can be done and how we bring in more climate finance, how we make sure that climate finance meets all of the environmental and social safeguards. Th these are not Tanzanian issues. These are global issues. The whole world is now trying to transition its economy. And Tanzania sits in a very, very, in, in many ways, in a very good position to be able to capture more and more of this green Finance. Um, this we're not talking about just a, um, a a sort of minor shift in the global economy. We are talking about a global economy that's going to shift by twenty thirty to twenty forty. And 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 I think that's an important thing to say, and I think it's an important thing to recognise. This is a fantastic opportunity for Tanzania um, to to access ever more amounts of of this climate finance. And, and so that's a sort of higher level point that, that I, would, I would like to make. I mean, at, at Carbon Tanzania, you know, for the last 10 years, we have been, um, you know, developing these projects very much as a demonstration, engaging with district and regional governance, engaging with the National Carbon Monitoring Center, the Vice President's Office, where climate change sits, uh, with the Ma Ministry of Natural Resources and Tourism, of course, TFS, where forestry sits, I mean, and, and having these conversations about this great opportunity. Um, climate finance sits in two buckets. You have the government to government bilateral arrangements that enable the type of finance that's come from GCF into CIVB, but you also have the private sector. And as we heard at COP, $120 trillion is now changing direction. And what that means is that that money is being pulled out, it's being divested, it's being created to move into this climate space. And as we've talked about here, and this is really important, the environmental social safeguards, gender, youth, these are not part of what this money requires, they are at the core of what this money requires. And um, as we heard from Frederick, Tanzania is signatory to lots of conventions on human rights, on gender. Tanzania has developed great strategies. Tanzania in many ways has great governance. Um, and, and that sort of leads to, the, to, to, the, to, to another point that came up about capacity. Yes, there are some technical elements to developing these red projects, which are currently barriers. They really are. It's a highly technical process. Um, sewer and the National Carbon Monitoring Center that's under Professor Zahabu, <laughs> you know, Tanzania has a lot of very skilled foresters. You, you have a very strong base in the forestry sector. Um, and so, yeah, there are some technical 
gaps. And of, of course, there are also capacity gaps in project implementation and in education. But again, that's not Tanzanian. We are shifting the entire global economy towards climate finance. And those gaps exist everywhere in the world. That's not an excuse not to act. That's just, it's almost like it's a race. And we want as much as possible of that climate finance to flow into Tanzania. That's, I think, our key objective and to keep these forests in the ground for, for generating income, not just now, but also for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and then I'm just gonna finish on this conversation about charcoal because it is a very, very interesting one. De deforestation is a very, very complex process. Um, the data suggests, and this data is built on high level satellite analysis, on uh, conversations with communities, on published literature, that agriculture is the primary driver of deforestation. Charcoal is the primary driver of degradation, and they are distinctly different. And I don't want to get technical here um, because charcoal generally looks for specific tree species. Now, charcoal will drive deforestation where degradation has reached its limit. So on the outskirts of major cities, yes, people will try and change, take any type of woody product and turn it into charcoal. But there's a key, I mean, this is well understood and there's been numerous World, World Bank reports and numerous data on this. And so that's charcoal as an element of deforestation. Then there's the question around charcoal in terms of its finance. The people who make charcoal get very, very small amounts of money. The people who sell charcoal generally get small amounts of money. The people who transport charcoal get most of the money. So for me, there is a relatively simple process that can happen over the next five years. Tax charcoal, incentivize, incentivize gas. Now, the gas companies, the people who are providing the small tungis of gas, would say, well, getting gas into remote villages, that's a real challenge for us. Well, if you can get Coca-Cola into every village in Tanzania, you can get a gas bottle. I, I think that's just something to overcome. In all parts of the world, when we look at the economics of change, it's incentivizing that change through the tax system that drives the change. Business drives the change. Um, and so I would just like to finish there on that little little comment, perhaps throw that out with that without getting uh, without getting too technical. Um, but yeah, this has been a great uh, discussion, um, very lively, which is exactly what it's for, of course. Um, and yes, I hope uh, all of you have a have a good day. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mark. Um for once again, your, your concluding your conclusion your concluding points um, speak to to the discussions that we've been having here today. But also, you you emphasize certain things. The fact that this conversation that we're having here today is not just a Tanzanian conversation; it's a global conversation. Um, this is important for us to understand. And so, we want to talk about this as Tanzania, but we can we can't also forget the fact that there is cooperation and co collaboration that's needed at the regional level. And I'm talking about the African region uh, level, but then also taking it all the way up to the global level. Uh, but also you pointed uh, really to the complexities of deforestation. I think this is also something that sometimes we, we, we simplify things or even the, the politics around charcoal. Um, we also sometimes tend to simplify things. So it's really just you're, you've, you've tasked us to just dig a little bit deeper, understand what uh, the, the different drivers uh, are more. Um, but also first understand the economics of change. And once again, you also used, uh, we went back to, to Honorable Zito Kabwe's word of transition, but emphasizing that it's not just a word, like it really is something that we now have to live to understand what this transition means. And in this transition, I'm now um, a point, um, marrying it to your fact that when you're talking about the economics of change and also the fact that business has to be on board. But once again, um, our keynote speaker spoke, uh, pointed to this uh, when uh, he said that the trade unions uh, have to be taken on board as one of the key actors. So I think once again, um, you're speaking to each other and pointing to the, to the complexities, but also to the actors that simply have to be 
um, on, on, on the table. So Asante Sanamak, uh, and once again, always a pleasure to hear, uh, to hear your stories and to, and to hear your, your examples and also for practical things that, that can be done and what we have done so far. Um, uh, Kamala Dixon, um, your, your final words and thoughts to us, Karibu. So maybe we lost Kamala. Uh, Shose, are you still with us? Your final comments? I, I think I also saw you had a question that you had posted um, in, in the chat as opposed to uh, when you were speaking about the, 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 the challenges that may be faced at the, policy, at the policy level, but maybe you can just give us your final thoughts as, 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 we, as we're wrapping up. Karibu Shose. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think my final my final thoughts is that let's look at um, all of this as an opportunity. Um, it, it's a great opportunity to to go through the transition, to change, um, to uh, you know enable and increase everyone's livelihood. Um, you know at at all sectors. Um, and and yes, it is a problem, but I think let's let's just make sure we view it as an opportunity. Uh, that's my final thought. Thank you very much, uh, Shose, for that and, and, and reminding us to really view this as an opportunity. Um, uh, Judith, uh, are you still with us? Uh, your concluding thoughts and, and uh, comments, please. Karibu. I think we may also have lost uh, Judith, uh, but in the, mean, in the meantime, Honorable, uh, Zito Cowboy, are you still with us? Your your final thoughts. As we wait for the, those three panelists to to maybe rejoin us, um, I, I believe I think Frederick should still be with us. Yes, I'm still with you. Terrible, uh... Sana Frederick. Asante. Fortunately, I didn't have any question directed, directed to me, but uh, uh, to conclude uh, uh, from what has been said, uh, I, I want to iterate that uh, uh, we need a policy on the green economy and still we need to continue doing something, uh, uh, capitalizing on the available uh, uh, legal, institutional, and uh, policy framework. Uh, <clears throat> I want to quote uh, the president of Mr. Subish when advertising his uh, uh, heavy duty trucks. Uh, he said, uh, it is true that prayers can move mountains, but before the mountains are moved by prayers, let's try Mr. Subish. So <laughs> let us try a bit subishy of the already existing institutional legal and policy framework to do what can be done. And I also call upon uh, uh, private sector uh, uh, CBOs, uh, FBOs, CSOs, FBOs to uh, you know, contribute uh, from uh, the capacity that they have to, towards uh, implementing uh, the actions that uh, lead to uh, low carbon uh, pathway. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much uh, for that and for those uh, final uh, words. Uh, and yes, I mean, your, 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 your insights and your comments coming from uh, what the, uh, the government is actually doing is really what um, I think uh, it was the final ingredient that we really needed in today's conversation. Uh, really helping us put things in context. So thank you also for encouraging um, the NGO, CSOs, uh, private sector to continue working in this. And, and this is exactly what um, this project uh, and, and this, uh, this platform that Pilot for Research and Dialogue um, has created has, and has worked for two years to really push uh, understanding and respecting the fact that we do need um, all the actors and all the stakeholders uh, to to be working in this in this together. So Tanaka Shukuru, we really appreciate um, your presence uh, and and for being here. Uh, I would like to at this point call on um, uh, not on the she, she was not a panelist, but um, uh, 
she 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 has some some few some few thoughts that that she can share with us. Uh, can I call on Miss Winfrieda uh, Shode to just give us her um, her thoughts and and reflections on what has been discussed today? Terrible Sana Winfrieda. Hello, Karibu. Are you getting me right? Yes, we are, Karibu. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for making this possible because this discussion I'm going to, I'm, I'm sure that is going to make changes, not only in Tanzania, but even in our neighbor country. Uh, what I want to contribute to, to this session, uh, I'm, I was thinking about how can we uh, make a, a very, very simple roadmap or, or a way which will help all those local people who are daily working with this environment, who are dealing with the environment. For instance, uh, those uh, village people who do not even have a WhatsApp or who do, didn't even hear about COP26 or who didn't even know what's going on on the global, they just maybe see heat increase or, or temperature increase. How can we create, if we can just find a time and find a, a very simple way uh, to make them to pass through this and either by starting by uh, training them, uh, providing awareness to those local village people, because they're the people who are dealing with the farming activities in daily basis, who are depending on their, on their maybe uh, fishing activities and everything which we see that is a one which is contributing to uh, global, uh, to climate change. So I would like to advise if we can put initiative, which will be simply understood to each and everyone from villages and to, to, to the higher, to the top level. And another thing I would like to thank Mr. Mark uh, on how he explained well on how to capture those uh, climate change uh, financing, because uh, I think it's a, a challenge. Uh, some people, they want to implement on the Uh, issue uh, on the issue of work, but how to capture that finance is a challenge to them. So if we can keep on uh, sharing how we can contribute to this, how we can involve them, issue of gender, for instance, how to use women voice, as we know that women voice is the thing which can use, be used to, to, to spread the voice and to to, 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 to hurry the process. I think those three things, uh, local, local people involvement, uh, simple roadmap, and involving uh, women on the issue of climate change maybe will help us to reach far in a very short time. Thank you. Asante Sana with Frida for um, wrapping it all. Um, up for us in a, in a nice bowl when you said that, you know, let's just think of having a roadmap. And I think this is something that is a practical step um, that, that can be done and, and important, especially when we link to the fact that just what we've heard today, there are so many, there are already initiatives already in place and things that are happening in this space, um, in the move and pushing Tanzania towards a green economy. But um, how well are they coordinated? Um, are they speaking to each other? Are we making sure that we're not duplicating efforts or not, or maybe uh, not enough efforts in one area or too much efforts uh, in, in another? So maybe this is just one very simple practical step in terms of bringing the key stakeholders. We've seen here in all the panelists and the keynote spoke to the importance of having the government, having the public sector, and then having the, the, the CSOs and the NGOs who of course, um, are arguably are, are more are, are closer to the communities um, uh, who are at the grassroots and on the ground um, for us then to, to create this, um, this roadmap and, and, and practical steps as to how we can really push this, uh, this agenda forward um, as a, uh, as, as a country. So I sent to Sanu and Frida for, uh, for that. But once again, for really cementing home the fact that women 
women cannot be left um, behind. Um, and of course, youth, as, as all the other panelists um, have said, uh, have said as well. So uh, we see that uh, today's discussion really um, have, has, has tied in, I think, all of us here today. We, we came in with our thoughts, our opinions, our own information and knowledge. But um, through our keynote, uh, Mr. Ria, through our excellent um, a panel, really, uh, that came from all the different walks of life, um, we have added um, significant uh, insight um, and information and tangible information that can be used by all of us uh, to be able to push uh, to push uh, this agenda forward for Tanzania. And once again, as Mark said, this is not just Tanzania's journey. We're speaking here as Tanzania because this is this is who we are. It is our country. We're citizens of Tanzania and we want um, to ensure that we're moving in, in the right direction. But this is really a global conversation. And as Tanzanians, we're part of that global um, dialogue, the bigger global dialogue. So once again, linking this to Pilot for Research and Dialogue and the work that you're doing and ensuring that you're creating the spaces, you're creating these platforms, you're creating these opportunities, you're marrying research um, in, you know, with, into practice, you're, you, you know, you, you're working in capacity development, really all the issues that have been raised by, by the participants today. And, and as we're wrapping up, and before I, I call our representative from, from the government, also from Ministry of Finance to give us the, the closing uh, remarks. I'd, I'd like to share with um, participants that we'll be posting an, an online poll, uh, which will be posted in, I think, any time now. And if you could just kindly um, take two minutes to fill the poll, it, it just helps us uh, to understand better um, our participants and, and where you're coming from. So we can also serve you better going forward. Um, but also, once again, um, if I could also ask, uh, I'd like to ask this because I've seen it on the on the chat. A lot of you are asking for con the contact information of our keynote and our panelists. I've seen uh, Mr. Rio, our keynote has already posted his uh, his contacts. But if the other panelists who are still with us, if you could also uh, kindly just. Uh, um, put in your 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 contacts uh your, your your full name your email and possibly your phone number if if that is okay um so that people can can continue having this conversation and dialogue and also uh, pick your brains as the experts and, and gain more information but also um open up room for collaboration and partnerships going forward so if i could ask the panelists to please um for those that haven't i'm seeing mark has done so mr rio has done so if the other panelists uh frederick um Jose, Judith, if you could also put um, your contacts uh, on the chat so um, they can also, participants can continue uh, sharing, um, asking, um, and, and possibly even work together and collaborate in, in the future. So the poll will be going, um, will be going up. It will take, um, once again, as I said, uh, two minutes. But as we are waiting um, for that poll to go up, and as we're reaching the end um, of our uh, a, a program today, but also the end of um, this two-year project from for Pilot for Research and Dialogue. Um, as it was stated at the beginning, uh, the partnership was not just with the EU, but also with our government through the Ministry of Finance. Um, and so with that, I would like to uh, invite a represent, repre representative from the Ministry of Finance who is with us today uh, uh, today to give us some, um, some closing remarks. Karibu sana, Vida Male. Karibu sana. Hello. Hello, Karibu. Uh -huh. I, I was worrying about the, the technology. <laughs> Poor Lesana, we can hear you. Uh, I'll change you almost three laptops there for <laughs> this <is> my phone. <laughs> yes, thank you. But I followed very well. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for your active participation and passion up to this time around on this important dialogue or oh, event the closing. As we mark the end of, of the dialogue under this program, the piloted research is for almost for two years period. It has been, seems like it is almost one year due to the issue of COVID the outbreak, where we limit ourselves to have the physical meeting, dialogues. So the, for real, this, uh, this program 
we see it is it was very short and the, a lot of research was done so we wish at least it could be extended we, we were further even request them can't you extend the program uh, duration so we can get a lot from you from you but it was impossible but what we appreciate is good therefore i would like to extend our special thanks to the financier the european union and further co commend the efforts made by tapri the tampere university he made COI for their hard working and the team working to ensure the project objective is achieved. Really, the output generated, the policy briefs, the studies, the researches, we really appreciate. These are very meaningful uh, documents to us, and they will complement the government efforts around the areas of economic resource and policy. As we all, we can, uh, some of us, not all, especially the Tapri, the implementer, we can recall this research component uh, was aiming at complementing the budget support program, the economic and the fiscal one, the one in which the money is disbursed to the government. It, the main objective was to complement that uh, budget support program, but it was unfortunately due to some delays, the COVID outbreak, the change of research, uh, I mean, statistic act make the delay, but it's it work because the component tried to go along the expected uh, stakeholder and try to work with them very closely. And we really appreciate their inclusivity of including various uh, stakeholder, government, United States actors in this program to ensure everything was in order as it was planned. Uh, the, another compliment goes to the panelists, which included the researchers, the academicians, uh, public officials, non-state actors, private sector. Really, they made our dialogue to be very active for their constructive ideas in the knowledge we shared. We really uh, witnessed their contribution on that. And I believe all of us, including the, uh, the other part that apply, we have expanded our networks, links, <clears throat> we have gained experience among ourselves. And for those who are yet to get our PhD now, we have some option to go around now, around the area of economic and fiscal areas. We can explore some other topics to do and collaborate with Stamp Prairie University. We believe it's not the end. Mark the end of, the, of today's event. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we are going to cut off the relationship between the Tampere and the government of Tanzania because they have been working very close with our think tank, they have been working very close with our academicians, our university, and that was the main, main objective. Uh, we really appreciate the way they promise us how are we going to sustain the good thing they have made under this program, because you can make a lot of good things, we can have a lot of good research, studies, policy brief, but if they're not sustainable, it will be useless. If we keep those uh, studies, uh, policy briefs in our shelf, it will be useless. But luckily they have their intervention and the, uh, as government, we'll make sure that all good things which have been done under this program will be sustained for our future dialogue between public and the private sector for the betterment of our policy. As because uh, without a uh, private sector collaboration between private sector and the public, uh, things won't move smoothly because the economy is composed of government, public, I mean, uh, private sector, non-state actors, we all push, we all push our development agenda forward. So we really value the platform which the Tampere bring, uh, brought in our system and strengthen it. We assure them we are going to, to sustain it and make sure that the good thing, the knowledge we gain, the experience, the interaction they taught us, or the improve uh, uh, in, in our system it will be sustained for real. I once again, I thank you all. I thank you, Tampere, all the panelists, government officials, private sector, for your very, very active participation in this uh, 
in this uh, program. Therefore, thank you all. I wish you the all the best in your future endeavor. Thank you. Asante sana, Ms. Vida Male from the Ministry of Finance. And thank you uh, for, for being patient with us and having to switch three laptops just to ensure that you hear the, the, the discussion that we, we, we've had for over the past three hours, but also to give us those closing remarks that really mirror and echo what um, our opening remarks by uh, Ms. Lisa Satoli um, uh, spoke to about the EU cooperation and, and the importance of such uh, cooperation, the importance of, of such collaboration, and the importance of ensuring that such valuable information does not simply sit on the shelf. So I think that's uh, a good way to, to wrap up our session. Um, our opening and closing remarks really speak to each other. And, and we also, once again, are reminded that Pilot for Research and Dialogue, um, they do have a sustainability plan in place. Um, they have the portal, et cetera. So this will be, and, and we're really hoping um, for it to be an ongoing an ongoing conversation, uh, an ongoing dialogue, um, once again, referring to the nine policy briefs, re referring to the bigger publication with, with all the chapters that were, that were presented today. Um, there's a wealth of information that has come out of this uh, fantastic collaboration between Tampere, the university, and all the other actors, the EU, COE, uh, Ministry of Finance. And it shows the power. It shows the power of bringing in uh, the different players, each bringing in their strengths in terms of their capacity strengths um, and being able to deliver uh, uh, such, uh, not just research and publications, but also um, webinars such as this. Um, so with that, I believe the poll had been posted. I, I'm not sure if Bram will be reposting it again for those that uh, did not take the poll. Uh, but with that, uh, we have uh, the links were provided to everybody in terms of um, the publications. Uh, we also this have this session today, for example, has also been recorded. Um, it will it is available on YouTube. Um, so if, if for anybody who missed any parts of it or wants to reshare and, and, and share the link with others, um, there is a YouTube um, recording of this uh, of this session. So that is also available. Um, but once again. Uh, we thank the collaboration because without the collaboration, we wouldn't be here today. And also we, we, we thank all of those um, who have been running behind the, 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 the scenes to get to get uh, these sessions um, going, specifically uh, Hadija, Omari, uh, Derek, and the team um, at Pink Hijab, who really have done a fantastic job of ensuring that uh, we get uh, all of you, we get the, the panelists, we get uh, the conversations going and that all of you join us in these events. We, we are thankful to Nashukuru Sana, Asanteni Sana. So with that, the, the poll um, is on. Uh, maybe if uh, the pilot for research and dialogue, if you can, because the, the chat has been very long, if maybe you could um, now also just repost the, the links to the, the, the briefs and the publications so that for those who have also, who are still with us, it's easy for them to, to access. I see people have been putting their, their contacts on the chat as well, which is great. Um, and yes, we're hoping that uh, this is not the end. We're hoping that um, maybe next year uh, there will be another similar um, and even better project, and we will get an opportunity to 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 be with you all again and to have um, conversations and discussions such as this that we've had today. So with that, I, I wish you all a good day, Asante Nisana, and take care. Thank you so much, Namwaka. Brilliant as usual. Asante, thank you.